Hello and welcome back to my channel, Deku Fanfic. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If Quirkless Deku Becomes Great Hero? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Han Baron from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. No POV. Things have been rough for Izuku since being diagnosed quirkless. But in his memories, back when he was a child, he felt he had a true friend. Far better than Bakugo or anyone had been before he was diagnosed. The memories were fuzzy, but he kept thinking it was Haku who was the friend he met in a strange field long ago. Today was another one of those bad days, but something else had happened. Meeting All Might in his weakened state and him trying to talk Izuku out of being a hero without a quirk. It's good to dream young man, but you need to be realistic. I guess he wanted to let me down easy because he didn't think I could be a hero without a quirk of my own. Izuku thought as he wiped the tears from his eyes. It still hurt though. As he walked through the city he wondered if he should go for a different path or still take his chance. Along the way though, he heard an explosion and ran towards it. There he saw the slime villain lose again and Bakugo was trapped by the villain. Izuku's legs started rushing him towards danger to try and help his bully. Even as terrified as he was, he managed to smile and pull Bakugo away. Before anyone could step in to try and take down the villain though, he unleashed his full fury towards the middle schoolers. They both winced expecting the blow to come. At the last second, something small, white, and red flew through the air and struck the eyes of the slime ball. Once it had landed, they could all see that it was some sort of little dragon with a large red hooded cape around his neck. It was about the size of an Akita Inu, and its big yellow eyes looked focused and determined. But the look morphed into a happy one when it saw Izuku. Izuku, it's so good to see you again. The dragon shouted before jumping into Izuku's arms. Before he could ask what was going on, the little monster snarled a bit before putting itself between Izuku and the slime villain. The confusion piles up as a strange set of goggles fall down and hit Izuku on top of his head. Put those on, kid. You'll see things. You may have forgotten about. A voice calls out from above with even the heroes being confused by the whole matter. The dragon looks back and tells Izuku to believe in him and they'll win. Izuku gulps before quickly putting the goggles on. He brings the lens down to his eyes and he can see a readout of some sort and he could remember the name of the little dragon. Haku, you're Haku right? Izuku asks with some trepidation. The dragon smiles before saying, it's actually Hackman. But Haku always worked just fine too. I am white colored after all. The villain snarls before attacking and knocking away a few of the heroes that tried to restrain him. All Might was there as well, but he was shocked to see the strange little dragon and couldn't muster up enough strength to blast the villain away. That Hugo stands and tries to attack as well, but he ends up doing more harm than good, culminating with him burning both Kamui Woods and Death Arms, and getting smacked by a piece of trash that the sludge villain threw at him. So, it fell to Hackman and Izuku to try anything to stop the sludge. Right as Izuku was panicking again, he saw a dumpster falling towards Bakugo. It would likely kill him, so the scared teen's legs move him again and he tries to cover the blonde. The surge of his courage and will feeds into the goggles on his head, and transfers the power to Hackman. H-A-C-K-M-O-N. D-I-G-I-V-O-L-V-E-T-O-O-O. B-A-O-H-U-C-K-M-O-N. Everyone in the area hears called out as the little dragon transforms. He is no longer just a dog-sized dragon, but one as big as a small car. Bea Huckman's back legs had changed into razor-sharp spike blade and the tail was longer and had a red blade attached to the end. His body also looked more armored, and he seemed to have flames coming from his front claws. Right as the slime villain had snaped out of his shock, Bea Huckman attacked. With Izuku calling out the attacks, Team Blade, as the tail blade was used quickly stab and spin up the sludge form of the villain. Starting with his eyes, the villain lashes out again and Izuku calls out, Blazing Flame and the beast lets out a blast of fire from his mouth and claws. The attack had caused the sludge villain to dry out a bit and he could feel his body stiffening. Right as he was about to try and get away, Izuku called out the last attack. Fifth cross, and Bea Huckman rushed forward to slash apart the dried out pile of slime. All that was still wet was his head, and Izuku caught that in a jar that had fallen out of the trash, and liked that it was over. But there were others who were worried about the flames from the fight spreading. Backdraft was unconscious after Bakugo had blasted something else to try and hurt the villain and instead hit the rescue hero. Right as All Might was going to step in once more, as he could feel some strength returning, a torrent of water poured down into the alleyway. Nicely done, kid. But I think you could use a little more practice. And maybe a few more partners. Everyone looks up and sees a massive serpent-like beast atop one of the buildings. And next to it were two people. One was a man with red hair and very dark skin. The other appeared to be a woman wearing clothing that looked like a cross between a demonic priestess and a feudal Japanese courtesan, wearing long, purple robes over a latex catsuit. The two human-looking ones stepped off the top of the building and landed with little issue. The man adjusted his duster coat and Izuku could see the goggles he wore around his neck, identical to his own. While this had happened, the sea serpent disappeared and Bea Huckman had returned to his Hackman form. When Izuku asks who he was the man just said, I'm just like you. In more than one way, I can show you more than you might know. 
and help you grow to be what these fools pretend to be. Izuku is still unsure, but Hackman looked up at the man with happiness, and then told Izuku that Terry had been watching over him and the others Izuku played with long ago. Right as the heroes were about to step in, the woman acted. She blew a kiss that let out a small mist, that made everyone else around hallucinate. Thank you Lilithman, that should keep them out of the way. Izuku still seemed uneasy, so Terry left it at that and said he'd be in touch. You can be guardian far beyond what any of these jokes who call themselves heroes can. But, you have to be willing to step beyond what you see and know, and not turn your back on it like someone else I knew from this nation. The man sends an angry glare with his dark eyes towards where All Might was standing. All Might's breath hitches and he feels his knees shake, because he knows exactly what the man was talking about, and what he had abandoned long ago. It can't be. I didn't think. He'd still be. All Might thought before reaching back in his deepest memories. All the way back to before he met his master. Before he'd started to train to be a hero and the inheritor of one for all. Back when he had a little partner made of rocks with a powerful punch. A portal then opens and the two walk toward it before tossing a piece of paper to Izuku. And with a two-finger salute, they leave. While Izuku is left with multiple questions and an old friend he had forgotten for some time. With the matter mostly resolved, Bakugo and Izuku are each taken aside with the former being reprimanded for his reckless actions during the fight, and the latter was scolded for running in recklessly. But a few complimented his courage in the heat of the moment. That boy who saved you is probably getting told off as well. But you are a bigger problem. Your quirk and attacks caused a lot of extra damage. Not to mention injured multiple people. We will be having more words with your school and your parents, young man. Kamui Wood said while nursing a few of burns caused by Bakugo's explosions. Death Arms meanwhile was talking with Izuku. That was reckless what you did, young man. But, if what you say about your legs started moving for you, well, it at least shows you have a truly heroic heart. I don't know what your quirk is, or who, what this little guy is. But you do have something I think a lot are missing now when it comes to being a hero. Izuku looks up at the white-haired pro with some tears in his eyes and thanks him for saying that. With that done, he offers to escort Izuku and Hackman home, to better explain a few things to his mother, who is freaking out and crying that her son had gotten mixed up in something so dangerous. Don't worry miss, I can keep Zuku safe. Hackman says with a smile and a raise of his claws. While Nko isn't sure on what to think of the little creature, she notes that it and her son seemed close. Well thank you, little one, and thank you Death Arms sir for escorting my son home. Nko says with a bow. Death Arms told her it was not trouble and tells them all to take care. She wonders what Hackman could eat and if it was similar to like having a dog. I'm not so sure they let us keep pets here. Hackman somewhat alleviates her confusion by telling her he could eat most anything and shows that he can turn invisible. But I really like meat a lot, especially Katsudan after the way Zuku talked about it and Terry used to make it. Hackman says with a bit of excitement, and Ko laughs a bit at this before patting Hackman on the head. She then says she'll make Katsudans for both of them, making both Izuku and Hackman extra happy. After the hearty meal, both boys are exhausted from the day they had. And while Izuku is tempted to just fall asleep right away, he has a few questions for Hackman. So, we met long ago right, but I don't really remember where we met. Can you tell me some more about it? and who that Terry person was. Izuku posed to the little white dragon. Sure, we first met when I found you in the digital world. You might not remember, but it's where all Digimon like me are born from. You said you had been exploring around the park on your own, and then fell into a hole. It must have been a portal taking you to the digital world. Hackman explains that the digital world was a massive place, filled with Digimon of all kinds and types. Some good, some neutral, some evil. And they had met by chance when Hackman had been training a bit to get stronger. We went on a lot of adventures together. You eventually found your way back to your world and would come and go for a long time. But, you stopped coming to the digital world about a year after you found it. Hackman said with some sadness in his voice. Izuku tried to remember back to that time but he kept feeling like there was something he was missing. Maybe it was some head trauma. Or it could be. No, it was because around that time was when I was diagnosed quirkless. And that dominated my memories. Izuku thinks with some sadness. He doesn't tell this to Hackman but he asks who Terry was again. Oh, Terry's great. He's one of the best tamers and guardians in the world. One of the two who protect North America. Not long after you stopped coming to the digital world, he happened upon me and started looking after me. Izuku hums before asking if Terry was a pro hero and Hackman confirms he wasn't. But in a lot of ways he and the other guardians are a lot better than all of the heroes put together. There's only six of them, but they protect both worlds with their partners. Hackman explains with some excitement. His partner is a bit surprised at what Hackman was explaining and is curious to know more. So is it thanks to their quirks, or just because they are partners with Digimon? Izuku asks with some trepidation. Hackman looks at Izuku funny before telling him something that surprises the team. Uh, none of them have those silly quirk things, and it's kind of hard to explain how they do things. But just like today when we fought that slime guy, your courage and true strength of heart was what gave me the strength to win. It's the same with the others. Hackman's words confuse Izuku a bit but he's more interested in what this could mean for his dream of being a hero. But he chooses to wait till tomorrow to ask those questions. Now he was just exhausted from the rough day he had. 
in a different part of the city, All Might in his true form was looking out over Mustafa with some unease. He let out a sigh before going back in to check his wall safe. He reached for it with some trepidation before putting in the combination. Once open, he reached past some of the money inside and other fancy items. To grab an item he hadn't picked up for so very long. And yet he could never bear to part with. It's been so long. I always wondered if it would ever come back to haunt me. Guts, I have to wonder if I made the right choice. As All Might or Tashinori is saying this, he pulls out an old bento box he had back when he was a child, opening it to reveal a pair of goggles, just like the ones Terry had given to Izuku. As he touched the goggles with some excitement, he was surprised by the tears welling up in his eyes, and they fell as he remembered his own adventures back in the day, with the partner he had, the friends he made, and the battles he won. In a strange world no one would ever believe existed. No POV. After the eventful day before, Izuku was spending some time with Hackman to try and understand him better. And to do that they were at Dagaba Beach, practicing a few of the little Digimon's attacks on the various piles of trash. Interesting. There are more attacks than what you've told me about. Try using Burst Flame, Izuku says after checking through the goggles. Hackman nods before shooting a small shot of fire from his mouth. Huh, not as impressive as I thought. Definitely not on the level of Blazing Flame. Hackman pouts a bit before reminding Izuku that he used that move in his champion form. Of course, I won at the same level as a rookie. Izuku hums at that and asks what he was talking about when it came to forms. Before the little Digimon can explain, a portal opens in the junkyard. Terry is one of the main ones coming out, but there are two others along with him. The first is a large gray blob like monsters, that smell like it was rotting. Rareman, feel like eating this up. Terry says to the blob and it lets out a happy roar and starts eating. The other with him was a huge green monster with a mask covering his face and carrying a massive battle axe. Izuku gulps seeing the large Digimon standing with Terry, especially when he flourishes his axe to be brought down with a heavy thud. Terry just smiles before saying, don't worry, Boltman is pretty harmless, just don't get on his bad side. Hackman notes that Terry often brought a mega-level Digimon with him, noting the general power advantage and safety with them. That doesn't explain what a mega is, or what a champion or rookie is. I mean my goggles did show that you are a rookie, but I don't know what that means. Izuku says slightly exasperated. Terry and Boltman chuckle a bit at this and suggest that Izuku take a seat. I can explain what you are missing. While Rareman was still eating all of the trash, the humans and other partners were sitting up by the trees. I'll start with the basics. Digimon are entities born of the massive streams of data running throughout our world. They can grow and evolve or digivolve after growing for long enough, or through a connection with a true human partner. He goes on to note that the levels they start with are the egg. Then when hatched they are the baby stage, illustrating by showing Hackman's baby form, Bottoman, and then his entraining stage of Koraman. All Digimon start out like this. In that regard they are no different from humans or other animals. However, they have different dangerous effects to people in this world, Terry says with a serious glare. He notes that Digimon can be dangerous and destructive not just because of their size or firepower, but their powers as well. Some of them can do very dangerous things to people, such as a clockman able to steal years or absolutely freezing a person in time. Until they are defeated or stopped, the victim will stay like that. Terry notes that there are others that play into some of the lore they were born from, like Myatisman. He's one of a few very dangerous vampire-like Digimon, and he does exactly what you are thinking. Izuku gulps before asking if other demon or monster-based Digimon did the same. Depends a bit on the situation, kid. After all, I am born from and evolved from data about Frankenstein's monster. But I'm not like either version of that monster, Boltman says with a smile. Or at least that is what his eyes show since his mask covers his mouth. Izuku chuckles a bit before asking what Hackman would become as a mega. Well, to be honest, that somewhat depends on you, and how you inspire or empower your partner. You have to show something special from within to unlock the highest levels of Digivolution. Terry explains as Rareman is finishing eating through all of the trash on Dagaba Beach. Terry thanks the large foul-smelling creature before absorbing him into his Digivus. Izuku is shocked by this and asks how many can be stored in his. Right now, probably only three or four. And you might want to choose the ones used carefully. It's not like you have the same things to work with I do. Okay, so, how do I get a new partner? Izuku asks in confusion. Terry tells Izuku he doesn't need to worry about that for right now. He goes back to the description of the levels of Digimon and the rough power each of them held. Rookies in general aren't too dangerous. There are some exceptions, but most can be compared to kids, especially some like the Quirt kids. Champions he notes are powerful only in small areas, usually capable of leveling a few city blocks. Ultimate level, the one just above champion is when you start getting into, well, crazy levels of power. Namely, some of them have the power of nuclear warheads, and you could say that as a general average. Izuku gulps at the thought of that much power and how dangerous it could be for everyone. He then looks up at Boltman with some fear before asking if Mega was above the ultimate level. We are, but it's a little strange in how it works. Generally, we have a lot of power in various ways, but we aren't always super huge. Boltman explains. Hackman then notes that size and power often vary quite a bit in the digital world, 
There's no real absolute and we can win as we fight strategically. But with a good partner, we can get even stronger. Hackman says before holding his claw toward Izuku, who is currently lost in thought in a mumble storm. He was considering all of the possible strategies that could come with a Digivolution or just from a team of rookies alone. Especially how the rookie level Digimon, even a team of them, could cause less damage compared to a champion level. Terry raises his eyebrow before patting Izuku on the shoulder. This snaps Izuku out of his ramblings and back to reality. Sorry, just a lot to think of and imagine. Izuku says with a blush. The older tamer chuckles before saying, I know. And it's not a bad thing. It shows how creative you can truly be and the ways you could guide your partners. Izuku nods before asking more questions about Digimon, their natures, attributes, and how to fight with them. I'd prefer not fighting, but they likely won't give us a choice right. Boltman agrees and notes that Digimon at times either follow the survival of the fittest or the strongest decides the outcome mentality. But if you find one that is more sensible or patient you could reason with them. Maybe. The large Digimon's words don't fully ease the worry, but it is something that Izuku feels he can latch onto. He thanks Boltman before asking if there was something special he could do to improve. Hackman agrees and wants to see where he could push his limits at Terry and Boltman share a look before glancing at the two younger tamers. Hmm, well, it could be dangerous, but it might be worthwhile to take you both back to the digital world. Terry suggests while rubbing the buttons of his Digivus. Izuku eyes widen to the point it kind of shocks everyone gathered and he starts stammering about what Terry was suggesting. But none of his questions are very coherent so no one can answer them. And Hackman has to snap him out of it with a smack of his claws. Thanks Hackman. So, I can go back there. To the world I met Hackman. Izuku questions after shaking his head. Terry nods and says, yes. But you'll need me to do it. You haven't gotten that ability with your Digivus yet. So, I'll make the portal if you think you are ready. Izuku feels a mixture of excitement and fear at the idea of returning to the digital world. And he asks the man if he could wait till tomorrow. Sure kid, there's something I want to take care of here anyway. Think it over in the meantime, Terry says before returning Boltman to his Digivus. He walks Izuku and Hackman home before going to check in on a few things that had been rumbling about from the Asian servers. But not before meeting someone he hadn't seen in over 40 years. Been a long time Toshinori. And you're looking a little worse for wear. All Might was currently in his true form, shopping for a bit of since he lost a lot of it during the Sludge Villain incident. The blonde coughs before saying, I know. The hero life I'm a part of. It's painful and draining. But it is good to see you. My old friend. Terry just snorts before saying, I'm not so sure we fall into that category. Not since you turned your back on everything to be a flashy hero to the public. Toshinori winces at that and asks that he not say anything too loud. Look, I'm guessing you're here. Because of the boy right. That's one reason. I'm also following up an investigation. After all, I have been protecting the servers in this side of the digital world. Since you refused to take up the role. Terry says with a scathing look toward the number one hero. Who winces again before apologizing. He suggests that the two could go for a quick meal. While the American man wants to deny the offer, he was feeling a bit hungry. Fine, just something quick. I've got until the sun goes down. Sure, there's a ramen place near my apartment. Let me just drop these off and we'll go. Tashinori says before they head over that way. After dropping off his groceries, the two head for a small ramen stand nearby. While waiting for their food, Terry creates a small field around them to disguise the conversation they were going to have. Since they won't know what exactly we'll be talking about, I can just say it, yes. I'm still fucking mad that you turned your back on the duty of we tamers. Not to mention, you basically abandoning Gatsuman. Tashinori doesn't wince this time and just lets out a suffering sigh. I know, to be honest, there have been days I've wondered if I should have taken up what Igami-sen asked me to do. If I should have tried to be a hidden protector. The older hero takes a drink of water before saying that he did still believe in his path of being a pro hero and the symbol of peace. You idiot. You realize you aren't fully saving anyone. Not to mention, in Yagami taught us, one person, Digimon, or pair can't do it all alone. It takes many people to truly build peace. Don't go there. I still respect my fellow pro heroes. Tashinori says with a glare toward Terry. But the dark-skinned man returns it by noting that he was still standing above everyone because of the power he had gained. Even if you support others, no one can really measure up to whatever that power of yours is. When you retire, and I know it's coming soon, whoever has to step up next won't be capable of the same level as you've set. He goes on to say that he's acting just like the criminals and monsters from their own youths. Or quirk people as he points out. You're so caught up in your power and thinking you can do it all or do whatever you need to, that you underestimate what could be coming. Courage, hope, will, and pure strength can't carry everything. Sometimes you need sincerity, intelligence, trust, and compassion. I know I don't fully embody those, but I'm not sure you are in a better position to talk. You brought a demon lord Digimon into this world for crying out loud. Tashinori replied, wondering how Terry managed to get one of the most dangerous Digimon on his side. He just shrugged and noted that one of the diggy eggs I found evolved that way. Nothing more than that. This gets Tashinori's eyes wide and he asks how many partners Terry actually had. About 100 or so, and about half are at mega level. That's the work I've put in the last 40 years. Tashinori almost drops his chopsticks as the ramen is served at hearing that. 
but he shakes out of his confusion and asks if he intended to train Izuku the same way they were back in the day. Yes and no. He knew a bit about the digital world but his memories are a bit buried. So I'll help him rediscover the other side and how to be a tamer that can protect this in the other world. Terry slurps up some of the noodles before asking for a drink. The two eat in a bit of minor silence before Toshinori asks if Terry had other Demon Lord Digimon on his side. No, just Lilithman. But each of the others who have been acting as watchers and protectors of the continents have them by their side. He notes that the only one missing was Leviaman, and he also said it was a bit offset by the presence of the Royal Knights among their teams as well. There are a few that haven't become part of the Tamer teams, but with Hackman at least a potential one is fulfilled. That is if young Midoriya can unlock that level. Tashinori says before eating some of his own ramen. Terry notes him knowing the boy and he gets a recounting of what happened between the two. And while the American wants to punch Tashinori in the face for what he said, he's holding off on it for the time being. After they finish, Tashinori just asks that Terry takes care of Izuku. That boy may have been through more than I thought, or chose to think about, and he could use a good mentor. Terry scoffs a bit before saying he intended to do just that. Take care of yourself, Tashinori, and be careful with that power. It might be riskier than you think. With that he left his former friend to think on what could be on the horizon, as well as to question what could be next for him and the hero world in general. Terry meanwhile had brought out a different Digimon to search for his intended target. This should keep you out of sight, Doraman. I'll also put out an aerial observer. Terry says while creating a camo field around the purple beast Digimon. This'll have to be one of the first things I teach Izuku, he thinks before sending out a Falcomon to stay hidden in the skies. He wanders the streets of Mustafa for a while, sometimes peeking through his goggles to look for the quarry in question. But all he sees are other Digimon that were living around and quietly in the back alleys and above certain businesses. H.M., where are you? He thinks as he continues his search into the night. His wanderings eventually take him toward a back alley, finding a few Digimon hiding out there. Hey there, I was hoping you could answer a question for me. Terry says as the Chewman and a few other nervous virus types peek out of their hideaway. He talks to them about a dangerous Digimon that had spotted or talked about in the area. We haven't seen it yet, but I have heard about a few disappearing lately, some of whom were our friends, a Gazaman says with a wary eye darting around. Terry hums at this and asks if they had any details at all. Any connecting factors? Gazaman just shrugs and says that most of those disappearing were completely random. Data, virus, vaccine, doesn't matter. One day they're here. Next gone. That's unsettling. I wonder if... Falcomen. Terry started before his eye in the sky reported that she spotted something. The tamer uses his link through the Digivus to see what Falcomen had. As she was flying, she spotted a salamanderman being killed with a knife through its head. But it wasn't the only one. Not long after, a second knife was thrown. And this one struck a human who was near an alley in the head killing them instantly, and Falcomen screams as another knife is thrown at her. Terry was wide-eyed at this and said, keep yourself safe and hidden as best you can. We have to stop this fiend. He then sprints out of the alley towards where Falcomen said Ninja Bird was evading and trying to counter the knives coming her way, but they kept flying, until she was finally struck in the wing and grounded. But before the killing knife could impact, she was saved by the timely arrival of Terry and Doraman. Metal Cannon. Doraman shouts before intercepting the knife with a metal blast from his mouth. Terry turns his attention toward the direction the blade was thrown before returning Falcomen to his Digivus. Ready Doraman, let's take this guy down. The duo say before the beast Digimon digivolves to his champion stage, Wrapped Orderman. He takes to the skies to search for the assailant, not having to look long as a few new knives fly at him and impact on his armor. Terry lets out a sigh noting he was glad he picked this Doraman. If you went to Doragaman then you'd be more likely to die. Terry said before Wrapped Orderman told him that was a morbid way to look at it. But I won't disagree. Gah. Even with my digizoid armor, it still stings when he hits. Wrapped Orderman says while flying around the air above the buildings and target. Back on the ground, Terry is following as fast as he can and using healing programs on Falcomen. She grunts from within the cyber device and says she wants back out. Wrapped Orderman can't do this alone. I'm healed up enough so let me back him up. Against his better judgment, Terry agrees and uses a combo barrier around her. Falcomen. Digivolve to. Saberdraman. The little bird announces before digivolving to the black flame bird in question. She unleashes some fiery shots in the attacker's direction after spotting some attacks flying Wrapped Orderman's way. Nitro Arrow. She shouts before launching a few purple flames. Wrapped Orderman thanks her before going in with his crash charge and then ambush crunch. The former attack misses and he ends up damaging a building. But the latter hits and he chomps down on the assailant. A Sealsterman. The caught assassin stabs Wrapped Orderman's neck to make his enemy let go and then drops a smoke grenade to disappear into the shadows once more. Terry catches up with the two and has them come back to his Digivus. It's craftier than I gave it credit. I didn't want to risk using Omega for the potential damage, but we might need it. Since they couldn't find their target, and the police were headed toward the damaged roof building, Terry thought it best to slip away and rest for the night. I've still got to take Izuku to the digital world in the morning. He's sure he'll want to go. He did seem a bit nervous about the whole matter, a few of his partners say within the Digivus. But Boltman assures them that Izuku will go. 
He's curious and more than likely is looking forward to the adventure. Terry lets out a small laugh and agrees. Just have to take him somewhere. A little less dangerous. There should be some regions around the servers that would work pretty well. And thus he goes to find a hotel to get some sleep for the night. Or what was left of it. With the escaping Sealstroman, it grunts in a bit of pain after being bit by Rapt Orderman. Damn, now I'm going to have an even harder time making my count grow, it thinks aloud before hearing a cry from a different alley. He sneaks over to see a man in a red scarf dressed in black combat gear above another person. Be glad that your death could lead to the purifying of this sick society, the human says before sensing the Digimon's presence. He throws a knife at it before taking a stance. But Sealstroman catches the weapon before skulking out of the shadows. It seems you and I are a bit alike in skill. But I think we could do more together, namely in eliminating certain targets. Interested? The Digimon's offer doesn't sound fully inviting to the villain. So, instead he charges at the Digimon with his chipped katana to defeat the creature, only to be surprised by it quickly blocking with its own knife. The pair then engage each other a few more times until Sealstroman pins the villain to the ground. Impressive, let alone your skills at camouflage. I thought you were just someone who was looking to piggyback off of my reputation. But you are more than capable alone, the villain says with a twisted smirk. The Digimon lets him up before asking if he was still interested in his offer. The villain thinks it over for a moment before agreeing. They call me the hero killer Stain. Who are you? Stain says before extending a hand. Sealstroman narrows its eyes behind its visor but accepts the handshake before saying to call him Seals. And thus, a dark alliance is set. No POV. Izuku hummed a bit while thinking about what the trip to the digital world would need. Hey Hackman, what is the digital world like? Like how do most of the Digimon live over there? Izuku asked while packing a sleeping bag. HM, well things are a bit different over there. We don't have as many good places to get food. And there are nice places to sleep. Oh and most Digimon are creatures that follow the impulses of the data they are made of. In other words, if it's a Digimon born of a hunting game, they'll follow that. A cookbook or fast food thing, they'll try to make it. Stuff like that. Izuku gave his little partner a funny look before thinking about grabbing a few energy bars and water from the convenience store. As well as a canteen and some toilet paper. Izuku, honey, what's going on? And Ko asked with a bit of worry after seeing all of the stuff he was packing. Um, nothing much. I'm just... It's a little hard to explain mom. Izuku said while rubbing the back of his head. And Ko looked at her son with a bit of worry and kept asking what he was up to. But the boy couldn't come up with anything. So, Hackman tried to fill in the gaps. We're just going to go camping ma'am. Izuku and I used to do it back in the day. It's a way to jog some memories. And don't worry, I'll protect him, the little Digimon said with a pat of his chest. And Ko just lets out a bit of a humorless laugh at Hackman's enthusiasm. And she isn't entirely sure about his intentions. So, she asks Izuku if that was really true. Pretty much, I know we used to play and spend time together. But it's buried in my memories. I'm hoping this will shake some of them loose. Izuku's face tells her that he's not explaining everything. But at the same time, perhaps this could give him some new paths or ideas. Anything other than being a hero. He just can't. And Ko thinks before sighing and offering to help him get ready for the trip. She gives him a bag of rice and some old camping rice cooking gear. As well as an old camping pot she and Asashi used to use when they'd go on retreats and trips of their own. Where will you be camping by the way? At hearing that question, Izuku freezes up a bit. He stammers a bit before saying they were going to the forests near Dagaba Beach. It's really clean now so it's pretty to look out on. That was my main thought anyway. Izuku says while looking slightly to the side. And Ko narrows her eyes a bit before nodding. Noting that she'd heard about the whole beach being cleaned almost overnight. Just be careful. I've heard that there was some strange creature seen when it was still a dump. All right. We will. Izuku says while thinking, yeah. I saw the creature. And it was the one who cleaned the whole beach. Hackman chuckles a bit before asking if they could take a bit of meat too. While pulling out a frying pan to cook said meats. And Ko chuckles a bit at Hackman's request. But she agrees and pulls out a few cutlets for the pair as well as some eggs for the mornings. Just, be careful Izuku, even if it isn't that far. With all the strange, things happening, I worry. And Ko says with a subtle look at Hackman. But Izuku just smiles and tells her it was all fine. I trust him. He's my partner and friend. Besides, push comes to shove he is plenty strong on his own, Izuku says a confident look on his face. One and Ko hadn't seen for quite a while. All right, have fun you too. With that, Izuku and his Digimon partner head out to Dagaba Beach to camp and meet up with Terry. Wait I just thought of something, how do we contact Terry? He didn't give you his number or anything like that. Hackman says as they were approaching the beach. Luckily, I figured you'd be up for doing this no matter what. And I waited for you to arrive. The pair here off to the side of the road and see the red-haired guardian waiting. He smirked at both of them before asking if Izuku was ready. And while he was still nervous, the young tamer steeled himself with a nod. Terry returned it and pushed some buttons on his Digivus and opened the portal to the digital world. Izuku gulped before stepping forward and feeling the rush of the data streams around him, as he fell toward a world he had forgotten about for some time. Upon opening his eyes once more, Izuku was surprised to see the landscape before him. While it looked like a normal forest, the way the trees were growing was strange to him, as was the fact that some of them looked to have roots made of metal. 
and in the sky he could see what appeared to be strange streams of light flowing though it. Just beyond those though were various creatures he couldn't identify. But as Digivus did and stored the information for later. I'm back. It's a little different from my dreamlike memories, but it does seem familiar to me. Izuku says with a mystified air about him. Terry smiles a bit at the boy before saying they had much to do. He directed Izuku one way while discussing some of the matters involved in protecting the servers of not just Japan, but the entire eastern half of Asia. It was the duty a different guardian had long ago, and would have been passed to another, and he chose to follow it. Terry had an angry look on his face while conveying this information and Izuku was curious, but he decided against angering his mentor for now. If the guardian had rejected the duty, then who has been protecting this region? Izuku asked instead. It's been passed among those of us who are the main guardians now. A new voice rang out above the pair. Izuku looks up and sees a woman riding atop a massive dragon-like Digimon with two huge swords. Floating on clouds beside her was an ape-like Digimon with a staff and wearing dark clothing. The woman lands and Izuku can tell she is of Middle Eastern or Indian descent, with her long black hair tan skin and other clothing. Padma, it's good to see you again, Terry says before extending a hand to the woman, who takes it with a smile and says it was good to see him as well. So then, I take it this is a new hopeful to being the guardian of the East Asian regions, Padma says with a smile towards Izuku. He gulps before saying, yes ma'am, I'm glad to be, while learning from you all I guess, sort of. You see it's just the two of us covering East Asia and down to Australia for now, but we can only do so much. We're hoping you can do the rest, Padma says with a pat of Izuku's head. He blushes at the action but thanks her all the same. He then asks who the two Digimon with her were. Oh these two, Gokomen is the ultimate of my first partner Monmen, and our human is one of my strongest megas, even if it isn't his final form, Padma says with a wave to the two Digimon. She mentions that she had come to check on a digital disturbance, but guessed it was probably the two of them. I'm guessing you have your first partner with you as well. Not to mention some other firepower, the Guardian of West Asia says with a look at Terry's Digivus. He sighs before choosing to show Izuku, given he was looking at the man with excitement. As was Hackman. Meet all four Sevedraman. He was my first partner. A Veman. It's one of the reasons I can cover these regions so well, given how fast he is. As Terry is introducing him, Izuku is awed at the large blue dragon-like knight. From the beam blades on his wrists to the sheen on his armor. So Kualo, what kind of Digimon is he? Izuku asks excitedly. And Ulforce laughs before saying he was one of the royal knights. There are thirteen of us, or there are supposed to be. Currently only eleven knights are partnered with the Tamers. And we work with them to keep the peace of both worlds. Izuku is intrigued by this and asks Padma which knights were her partners. While well, the lead one is Alphaman. The other is, well a cousin to Ulforce here. It's a Magnaman. This makes Izuku more curious about the other guardians and who all of their partners were. Terry then collapses to say they had more to do. Take care Padma. There have been some strange rumblings about the networks lately, he says before shaking her hand once more. The guardian nods before hoping back on our human and saying goodbye to the pair. That was interesting. So where are all the knights based? Izuku asks with excitement. A state mirrored by Hackman as he views that as a good goal to aim for. And while Terry doesn't want to talk about them, Ulforce is happy to talk about himself and the others. Noting that Terry also had the strength of Kenter Osman so he could be anywhere as quickly as possible. While the Na East Coast Guardian had Omnimen and Galantman to protect that region, South America has Dynasman and Craniumman. Africa has Leopardman. Two of them actually. Europe, he mentioned, had an unusual setup. That being examined in a knight that wasn't always a member. That being Imperial Verman. It's because it can access the power called Paladin Mode through a special sword. But it's normally not a member of the Royal Knights. Can we please move on? Terry clarifies before exclaiming. Izuku gulps before agreeing. After they had walked a while, the man stopped and suggested that Izuku could make camp. They were overlooking a large field area that seemed to also have a village in it. One that seemed to be made of children's blocks. Hey what's that? Terry-san. Terry-san. Izuku says after looking out over the field. When he turned back the man and his partner were gone. Hackman was surprised too but had an idea on what was going on. He probably wants you to figure things out for yourself. Though he'll help if needed. Izuku gulps and then sets about making camp in the area. Think they'll be fine. All for Sevedraman asks while the pair are hidden with a stealth program his partner used. That'll be up to them and who he partners with will also be up to him. We can only watch over the boy. With the greater threat gone though, others take note of Izuku from the trees. A human, and a young one at that. I've heard they can boost your strength somehow. Maybe we need to eat him, or just keep him scared. We'll worry about that later. Let's just watch for now. Izuku can somewhat feel these gazes, but he's not sure if it's just wilder-minded Digimon or ones that are more intelligent. So he stays close to Hackman for the time being with some exceptions. After they'd set up camp, Izuku wanted to look around a bit more and learn about the Digimon in the area. So, the pair walked through the field and bits of forest nearby, the boy taking note with Digivus and notebook of the Digimon as they were walking, from Erdermen and Flymen in the sky to Mushroomen, Floramen, and other Digimon in the trees, until finally reaching the strange childlike town. Whoa, I haven't seen colors like that since I was really little. 
not to mention toys and the like since I was that size either. Izuku notes while looking around, only to trip and fall over something he missed in his curiosity. That being an egg, he looked around and noticed that there were multiple eggs scattered about. What is this place? Izuku questioned before checking the egg at his feet. I think this is one of the primary villages, one of the many places Digimon are reborn into. Hackman says with some awe, barely remembering the village himself. Izuku is confused and asks what Hackman meant. Before the Digimon explains about the cycles all Digimon go through, Izuku hums before saying it sounded painful. We don't remember our pasts for the most part, but maybe some of those experiences shape us in a way. It look out. Hackman shouts before pushing Izuku to the side. A blast of lightning then strikes the ground and the pair hear a group of voices calling out. No one will harm these babies and eggs while we're around. Is called out from a high point in the village. Izuku and Hackman look up and see a group of Alekmen snarling at them. Their tails still crackling. Izuku stands and says, wait we're not here to hurt anyone. We just before he can finish another blast of lightning is shot at the pair and they start running. Dodging around the eggs and the stone cribs of the baby stage Digimon. The Alekmen kept chasing the two until they had left the village. That's that. They won't come here anytime soon. Wait, are you all forgetting that that boy had an egg with him? I'm going after him. With that, one of the older Alekmen ran off to get the egg that Izuku had picked up back. With the young pair though, they were mostly catching their breath. Okay, that was uncalled for. We were just looking around. Hackman says with a snarl. Izuku sighs before telling Hackman it was fine. They were just protecting the little ones and the eggs like this. Wait like this. Izuku finally noticed that he was carrying an egg and panicked a bit. He first asks if they should take it back and what they should do, only to hear a hissing sound all around him, and from the forest came a group of Vegamen and a Blossomen. They were eyeing Izuku and the Digic he was carrying. Looks tasty, some of the Vegamen said before lashing out at the boy and egg, with the boy covering up the egg to protect it. Hackman Digivolve to Baya Huckman. His partner shouts before engaging the Digimon. Izuku, get clear, I'll hold them here. Baya Huckman shouts before unleashing his blazing flame to set fire to Blossomen. While it is screaming, Izuku quickly stands and tries to get the egg away from the hungry Digimon. And while Baya Huckman is dealing damage to all the plant Digimon, he couldn't keep his eyes on all of them. Like a group of Veggie and Red Vegemon that slipped by and were still chasing Izuku. He kept running until one of the Red Vegemon was close enough to attack with its spiked fist and then chili pepper pummel. Izuku screamed out a bit as he fell to the ground. But he kept covering the egg even when a few more attacks were thrown his way. He needs help, Alphor says before getting ready to fly in. But Terry stops him. Just wait, I don't think we'll need to step in right away. Right as he was saying this, a blast of lightning burst forward and struck a few of the Vegamen. And the old Alekman saw how Izuku protected the egg, even at risk to himself. This makes Alekman's protective spirit rise as he snarls at the virus-type Digimon. Izuku lets out a few breaths before saying a thank you to the Alekman, as his courage resonates with the Digimon and causes the little Digimon to digivolve. Alekman, digivolve to, Leomon, and suddenly the little red Digimon becomes a large lion-man Digimon who draws his sword and slashes a few of the Vegamen. Have a taste of this fist. The fist of the Beast King. Leomon roars before unleashing a punch wave that looks like a lion at the Red Vegamen, sending them flying. Suddenly though, Baya Huckman crashes through a few more trees. The White Dragon Champion shakes his head before looking back toward where he was thrown. Blossomon is still burning but it kept coming for them. Leomon snarls as does Baya Huckman before putting themselves between the plant Digimon and Izuku, and both roar before unleashing their signature attacks at Blossomon. Not seeing a flame shot from one of Terry's partners. That being a shot from a war growlman. Good job buddy. Now let's leave it to them from here on. Terry says before bringing the virus Digimon back into his Digivus. As Blossomon was fading out of existence. Both Digimon turned back to check on Izuku. Baya Huckman rubbed his partner a bit and could hear the boy breathing. Phew. Thank goodness. But he could use some attention. The dragon said with some worry. Leomon nods before picking the boy up and offering to treat him back at the primary village. The two hurry back and surprise the other Alekman. When Leomon explains the situation, they help to bandage up Izuku's back and cool him off. Izuku groans some time after they had finished and started to wake up, with the sun starting to go down. Oh what hit? Wait. The egg. Where is it? Izuku says before Leomon comes over to check on him. That's the first thing you worry about huh? Yes we should have been more patient. The green-haired teen is surprised by the large Digimon but Hackman explains who it was originally. Um, sorry about taking the egg. I was just checking it to make sure it was okay and I ended up taking it, Izuku says with a rub of the back of his head. Well even if it was an accident, you still cared for and protected it. And for that we are thankful, one of the Alekman says before holding the egg up to show Izuku, who smiles and rubs the top of the egg before saying, glad it's okay. Right as he says this the egg started to shine and transform, turning into a small little jellyfish like Digimon in Izuku's hands. Toyaman, it cheerfully chirps while looking up at Izuku, and the green teen coos a bit while looking at the adorable little monster. Hackman lets out a hub before saying, looks like this little one likes you partner. The little dragon sniffs it a bit, but it then starts crying in Izuku's arms. Hey, hey, it's okay Hackman is really nice. He protected you too after all. 
Izuku defends before asking Hackman to come over. He pets his partner before gently easing him over to Poyaman. While it still seems nervous, the crying eases up a bit. Liam and hums before saying Izuku should keep the little Digimon. They seem kind of attached. Consider it also a thank you for trying to protect it. Izuku thanks the Lion Digimon before asking if he was going to stay with the village. Yes, even if I've digivolved, my dedication to protecting this place stays. But if you need help, I'd be happy to give it. Liaman says with a smile directed Izuku's way. With that, Izuku, Hackman, and Poyaman take their leave and head back to their camp. When they arrive, Terry is sitting there with a smile on his face. You had a full day, didn't you? He says with a slit lilt. Izuku grumbles before asking where he went. Not far. But I figured if you didn't try to deal with things yourself, then you couldn't grow into your role. And you got a new partner out of it. Terry says with a gesture to Poyaman. Yeah, but I don't know. How to? You know now that I think about it, you haven't helped me understand anything. Terry has a laugh before apologizing and telling him that he'll go over the basics of the use of his Digivus and some codes and other skills he can use, starting with showing Izuku how to register Poyaman as his newest partner. All the while Terry was cooking up some of the food Izuku had brought, as well as what he brought before opening the portal. After eating in the stressful day, Izuku and Hackman are ready for some sleep, with Terry saying he'd keep an eye on them during the night. But even though the boy is nervous about sleeping in the digital world, his exhaustion catches up with him quickly and he passes right out. Not a bad first day. But you still need to learn more about this world, and a few other things while we're here, Terry says before disappearing again, and not telling Izuku how to open a portal back to the normal world. When Izuku awakens the next morning, he's surprised that Terry is gone again, with only a note to tell him that he'd have to survive for at minimum a week in the digital world, just among any partners he'd gather. This is important to understanding this world and the Digimon themselves. You'll get what I mean later. Good luck. Izuku reads aloud while Hackman enjoys some meat Terry left. Once he was done reading though, Izuku was panicking and wondering how his mom would handle him being gone for that long. One night had her nervous enough. This though, Izuku can't really finish his thoughts though as before long, Hackman starts growling and telling Izuku to pack what he can. We've got incoming, Hackman says before grabbing Poyaman and a few other things. Izuku wonders what he's talking about, until he sees a few large dinosaur-like Digimon stampeding through the field. He quickly grabs his pots, sleeping bag, and backpack before running out of the path of the creatures. What the heck were those things? Izuku said after the danger had passed. Those were Tiranaman, champion Digimon that have a powerful flame breath. Pretty common data types for these areas. Hackman describes almost nonchalantly. Izuku gives his partner a flat look before sighing and wondering if he really could survive a week. The trio wandered for a time to find a new campsite with Hackman foraging as they were going to get more provisions, and teaching Izuku about some of the edible types of plants or data in the digital world. When they finally find a spot to rest near a river, Izuku is tired and dirty from dodging more Digimon along the way. This will be cold but I really could use a bath, Izuku says before stripping out of his clothing and jumping in the river to clean up a bit, pulling Hackman and Poyaman in as well to clean them up. What else will happen this week? Izuku thinks aloud as they clean up a bit. Something quickly happens with Poyaman in the next two days. The next morning after cooking and eating some food, Poyaman started to glow and digivolved into Takaman. And the day after that, when Izuku was about to get attacked from behind the little blob of a Digimon attacked some Pegumon that were sneaking up on him. Thanks Hackman. Takaman. Izuku said with a pat to both of their heads. Takaman preened a bit before glowing and digivolving again. Into a guinea pig-like Digimon with bat-like wings that seemed to let it fly. Or rather her as she chose to identify before telling Izuku who she was now. I'm Tsukaman. It'll be nice to be able to help Hackman Anaki more now. Tsukaman says with a smile to the little dragon, who just snorts before saying, well I won't reject some back up, but you still can't go up to champion, so just keep Izuku safe when you can. Little sister, Izuku laughs as well before petting both again, with Tsukaman sitting atop his head and commenting on how soft and fluffy his hair was. Well, I guess we keep exploring, Izuku says before packing up to move their camp again. While they were looking for a new place to camp again, they had come upon an area that was more like crags and mountainous, with Hackman commenting on the dangers of the area. A lot of more combative Digimon prefer these areas. They could get us into a bit of trouble. How do you mean? Izuku asks as they keep walking, only to hear the sounds of a fight breaking out on a different ridge. And Izuku rushes over to investigate. Hackman sighs before following his partner. When they reach the top of the ridge, Izuku can see a little dragon Digimon that was squared up against a group of green-skinned Digimon. Though two larger ones had different skin pigments. Um, I don't know who those are. Anaki, Tsukaman asks with some confusion. Goblimon, an Ogreman, and a Fugaman facing down a monitorman, one who looks pretty beat up. Hackman says with some worry, especially as Ogreman unleashes his pummel whack at the little dragon and then Fugaman fires off its evil hurricane. When the Goblimen each charge up their clubs for goblin strikes while Monoderman pushes himself up to stand and fight once more, Izuku trembles a bit before running toward the little dragon to tackle him to the side and away from the attacks. Well that's not surprising, shall we? Hackman says to Tsukaman with a smile before charging down the hill as well 
and quickly digivolving to Bay Hackman to cover the two and cancel out the attacks from the Goblinmen, snarling to make them run before the two larger Digimon take off too. Launderman grumbles a bit before they run though, saying, stay, out, of this, I'm, not done, before collapsing in Izuku's arms as the Goblinmen, Ogreman, and Fugumen run off. Izuku smiles before saying, he's tenacious. Maybe a bit like, me, no POV. Monitorman groaned as Izuku and his team carried him away from the mountaintop he'd been fighting on. Easy Bea Huckman. I think we may be moving too fast for as hurt as he is. Izuku said while riding atop his old friend. I don't want to take too many chances, Izuku. Given the Digimon we just had to face off with. Bea Huckman said as he was running. Tsukaman meanwhile was watching the rear as she sat on Izuku's head. And she unfortunately had something to report. Guys, we've got incoming. It looks like the Goblin group found some air support. She says before Izuku looks back and sees a couple of Airdermen and Flymen above them. And the Goblin riding atop the flyers. Izuku curses before apologizing to Monodermen. You were right, Bea Huckman. We need to get out of here fast. He says as stingers and air needles fly at them. Bea Huckman dodges around as quickly as he can as Tsukaman warns him of the directions the attacks are coming from. Monodermen opens his eyes to look up and see his enemies flying above. Let me down. I have to face off with them. I need to keep fighting. A little dragon grunts out while Izuku holds him still. No way. You are in no condition to fight. Izuku says while holding the monitorman in place. Then how about I give us some cover? Purple haze. Dark twister. Sukeman says before belching out a cloud of purple smoke. And the flapping her wings to whip up a little purple tornado to spread her poison mist. Bea Huckman compliments her before cutting into a cave as the mist distracts the flying Digimon. Izuku keeps monitorman in place as the Goblinmen and their Digivolutions get off the flyers. This is a one-time thing you dumb beast. Never ask for this again. One of the Airdermen shouts as he roughly tosses Fugumen to the ground. The red-skinned ogre grumbles as the Flyman and Airdermen leave. Bea Huckman returns to his Hackman stage and says they need to keep moving. Even with your smoky cover, it will only last so long. Hackman says before creating a small fireball in his mouth. Izuku agrees and tells Hackman to lead the way. Sukeman, I hate to ask again but can you watch our backs? Izuku says while adjusting his hold on Monitorman. The little purple flyer smiles before saying, you don't have to ask. You're my partner and, well kind of my dad. I'll keep an eye out. The green teen blushes at this and thanks her before following his old friend. Once inside a bit deeper, Tsukaman catches up with them. Izuku then takes the moment to check over Monodorman and his injuries. Easy, let's bandage you up a bit. Monodorman groans and grumbles as Izuku treats some of his bruises and cuts from his battles with the Goblinmen. You should have left me. They'll just come after you now, the little purple dragon says as Izuku bandages up his arm. If I want to really embody what it means to be a hero, then I can't avoid or reject someone in pain. No matter what, Izuku says with a smile directed the rookie's way, who just sighs before quietly thanking the human. Hackman smiles with the fireball burning in his mouth, remembering that it was just what Izuku used to do back in the day. After he finished bandaging, he asked why he was fighting those Digimon. Monitorman looks to the side before explaining how it was just life for most of them in these regions. We all fight for survival, especially with how rough and dangerous these mountains are. But those guys are different. Monitorman notes how they've been bullying other groups of Digimon and stealing all of their food and other resources for a while now. There's some boss or whatever who's giving orders. I was just protecting a small group of younger Digimon when I pulled those jerks away. Guess you're a hero too, right down to the self-sacrificing nature, Izuku says with a nod. Hackman agrees and hopes they can get out of this bit of trouble. Then maybe we should look for a way out or make sure that they are gone, Tsukaman says before flying off. After she had gone, the rest of the team was preparing to move out as well. Hackman used his flames to try and find another way out. Izuku meanwhile plays with his Digivus to see if he could make a portal home again, as well as other programs that could be in the base item. But he gets worried when Tsukaman doesn't return after a while. She's been gone too long. We should look for her, Izuku says before standing. But a new voice makes him extra nervous. You want her, you deal with us. The one saying this was a Goblinman that made his toward the group. Monodorman groaned as he stood, ready for a fight again. While Hackman snarled at the virus-type Digimon. But it just held up its hands before asking him to wait. We got little one. You want her back, you deal with me. Er, us. The Goblinman says before gesturing to its club. It tells them to come out so they can talk. We talk terms outside. You follow me, it says before turning back to the entrance. Hackman narrows his eyes at the crooked rookie and keeps his fireball ready. While Izuku helps Monodorman up and asks what else he knew about the Digimon. But the dragon mentions that it wouldn't do them much good in this situation. Let's just see how this plays out, it says with some worry. Once outside, they see all the Demon Man Digimon standing there. With Fugumon holding Tsukaman in his hands. Izuku panics a bit and tries to run toward her, but Goblinman stops him. No move. Understand. It says with a gesture of the club. Sorry, I tried to just keep an eye out but I didn't notice the one and Tsukaman says before Fugumon squeezes. You be quiet. So you some strange Digimon. Not much power but look like you can heal. Here deal, you work with us. And we let them go. Even share food with you. 
Izuku has an unimpressed look as the fugaman talks. Is he serious right now? Who would believe that or go along with it? Then again he doesn't look like much of a mental case. Izuku thinks while looking at the situation before him. And he also concludes that Hackman couldn't win, even if he digivolved. Can I think it over? This is a bit of a troublesome situation you've got me in. Izuku says hoping to stall. And while Fugaman wants to rage out with a no, the Goblin earlier stops him and asks Fugaman to wait. We still got hostage. No need to rush. It says with some diplomacy. Fugaman looks ready to smack the rookie, but Ogreman stops him and agrees with what he said. You get one hour. Ogreman says with narrowed eyes. Then gestures to his crew to back away for the time being. Izuku hums before saying, let's back in two. Then we can talk. The other two Digimon agree and go back into the cave. One of the Goblin stays but gives Izuku its spare club so they have some fire in the cave. That one seems a bit smarter than the others. Think it'll be trouble. Hackman says while keeping an eye on the entrance. Izuku sighs before saying, probably. But we've got bigger problems now. He goes over how they don't have the power or advantage to really fight their opponents head on. They're all virus types and you're a data type. Meaning we don't have that for an advantage. Then to top it off, they've got two champion levels in Tsukemon. Izuku summarizes as he starts cooking some meat. Hackman nods and sighs that he couldn't reach ultimate level yet either. Izuku passes some meat to him and Monoderman as they wait. Monoderman hums as he eats and thinks about what Fugaman had said during the demands. Realizing something important. Wait, he said you're a Digimon. But you're not right. You're a human right. Oh yeah, I thought you'd be more used to them. Izuku says with some confusion. Monoderman mentions that the Guardians didn't get involved in the day-to-day -day stuff. Especially since they were often trading off and on. They might just think you're a human form Digimon. And if that's the case, we might have an advantage they don't know. Monoderman asks if Izuku could make him digivolve. I'm a vaccine type, meaning I've got that advantage and if I can close the gap of levels, then we've got a way to fight back. Hackman and Izuku share a look before looking back at the purple dragon. Izuku leans back before saying it wasn't that simple. I can only do that with someone who really wants to work with or protect me. I mean we've only just met and all. I leapt in to help you because you needed it. Hackman speaks up next by saying that maybe it'd help if they'd talk about their pasts. Might make up or help forge some bond. His partner looks at him funny, but shrugs since they don't really have much else to do. They spend the next few minutes talking about what their lives were like and what they had experienced. With Izuku growing up an outcast, Hackman feeling loneliness when Izuku didn't make his way back to the digital world, and Monoderman was a brawler who tried to protect others. Though it often ended up coming back to bite me, given I'd pick fights with those who'd strike back harder, or I'd get kicked out of places I tried to protect because I ended up causing more trouble. At least you had the power to do something, Izuku says in a dour mood. Hackman bumps into him and says he does have power. It's just a power that has nothing to do with strength. You showed it back when you were a kid and when you charged in to save that jerk. It's a power plenty have, but few know how to use it. Heroic will. Monoderman is a bit wide-eyed and asks more about that and why Izuku did it. But the human doesn't know since his feet started moving on their own. I started moving on my own. Huh. And I just knew I had to do something. Even if it cost me. Just like now. Izuku says before coming to a slight realization. He stands and notes they just have a few more minutes. I know what I need to do. Hackman be ready. Monoderman you rest. Izuku says before walking toward the mouth of the cave. The mini dragon is wide-eyed and asks what Izuku had in mind, but all Izuku did was smile at him. Once outside, Izuku handed a piece of meat to the guarding goblin, who took it happily before going to get the bosses. So you make choice. You work with us, Ogreman says with his eyes narrowed. Fugaman still has Tsukeman in his hands and was keeping a tight grip. Izuku is mad but lets it pass for now before saying, yeah. If you give Tsukeman to Hackman, I'll go with you. His old partner and new partner were worried and scared for what he was offering. Monoderman meanwhile is wondering why he was willing to do this. He's willing to sacrifice himself to save someone else. No reward or anything. He's willing to put himself on the line to save others. Monoderman thinks before feeling more of a connection to the young human and feeling the will from Izuku flowing into him. His body starts to glow a bit as he steps forward and the bandages come off. And his body grows and his claws sharpen. Even in the cave, he can make out Fugaman and knows what he needs to do himself. He takes a step forward as he feels the power flow through him and says, Monoderman, Digivolve to Strikedraman, as the large humanoid dragon rushes forward and impacts the center of Fugaman, making him lose his grip on Sukeman and shocking everyone. Strikedraman snarled before telling Sukeman to get higher into the air. She nods and flies up out of the range of the other Digimon. Well that happened. Care to back him up buddy? Izuku says with a smile to Hackman, who returned it before Digivolving to Bea Hackman. He then tackled Ogreman before telling Strikterman he'd keep the demon busy. Fugaman is yours. Let him have it. Bea Huckman says while unleashing a fifth cross to knock his opponent back. Strikterman nods before staring down the red-skinned ogre, which roars before unleashing an evil hurricane at the dragon. But he easily dodges to the side before quickly rushing forward to slash the side of Fugaman. It roars in pain while unleashing a few more attacks, but Strikterman easily dodges and deflects the attacks thrown his way. 
After tossing Fugaman over his shoulder, Strykterman says, I think it's time to finish this. Strike Fang. Flames cover the dragon's body before rushing forward and plowing through the enemy Digimon, deleting the opponent. Ogreman is still standing, but he sees his friend going down and roars in anger. He throws out a pummel whack towards Strykterman to avenge Fugaman. While this had been happening, the Gobbleman went to engage Izuku to distract the champions. But Izuku kept his distance or tripped up the little Digimon and Tsukaman fired a few attacks to cover him and keep him out of reach. Izuku tripped and one of the goblemen caught up with him. As he was thinking he was in trouble, his goggles beeped and showed something. Wind claw. Izuku read and then his hand suddenly had said claws. He struck the goblemen and sent it flying a bit. Okay, that's new and weird. Izuku thought aloud before checking his digivus again. And he sees something else. Sonic void. He shouts as a ball of wind is formed in his hands and he launches it at another goblemen. He starts to celebrate as he can somewhat fight Digimon himself and he gets attacked from behind for his hubris, and Tsukaman saves him. You're not hurting my papa, she shouts after letting out a dark twister to knock the other goblemen down. The one who tried to negotiate tells the group to retreat as they saw Fugaman being defeated, grabbing Ogreman to say they needed to fall back as Bea Huckman ran in and pulled Izuku and Tsukaman away. Strykterman, come on, let's get out of here. Izuku shouts to the dragon, and while he wants to keep fighting, he knows Izuku is right, and quickly dashes off. We need to talk to boss. He have better idea what to do, the goblin says with a worried look. Ogreman snarls before agreeing and they fall back to a volcanic mountain. Back with Izuku and his Digimon though they were all happy they got away and dealt with one of the dangerous Digimon. Strykterman was laughing out loud as he did Digivolve back to Monoderman. Oh man, that felt really good to do. The mini dragon said with a big smile on his face. Sukaman thanked Monoderman for saving her as she landed on Izuku's head. So I guess we've got a new member of the family. She says with a smile directed Izuku's way. Yeah, I guess we do. Welcome to the team Monoderman. Izuku says with a hand extended. And the little dragon shakes it. Then Hackman puts his claws atop the hand. And Sukaman flies down and puts her own hand in. They spend the next day or so with Monoderman guiding them around the mountains. And looking for the few holdouts against the bully of the range. Finally finding a small village of Gatsuman and Tumbleman among other mountain dwellers. But their problems are about to get worse. The Gobbleman group met with their leader who was not happy at all. They send you packing. You had two strong champions. He roared as he towered above his goons. Ogreman wants to blame the smarter goblemen, but they take their moment to speak for themselves. They had a funny man formed Digimon. Seemed different from us. Patched up that Monoderman we were fighting. And somehow, they could digivolve easy. Little white dragon turned into a big one and Monoderman became Strykterman. Never seen that before. The boss is wide-eyed at hearing this. He asks if the man form had goggles of some kind on. And when an affirmative is given, he roars again in anger. That was no Digimon, you idiots. That was a human. They can grant great power. I know that firsthand. The boss steps more into the light of his cavern and shows his face. The glowing red eye standing out against his large crystalline form. This was Gogmaman. He let out an angry snarl before saying the Gobbleman was smarter. And that can be useful with a bit of extra power. Gogmaman reaches over and pulls a crystal from the lava. Crushing it over the top of the Digimon and causing a rush of energy to flow to it. Gobbleman's body starts to burn with energy and pain as it is forcefully digivolved into Wizardman. Should have made a smarter one sooner. Now then, the rest of you step forward. Call a few more of your brothers. We'll show that human that he's not some guardian. He's outclassed against the rest of us. The Gobbleman bow and scamper off to get their fellows. Gogmaman leaned back in his throne before thinking back, crushing a few stones in his hand as he remembered someone who used to be a friend and partner too. I know it's not you, but I wonder if this boy really thinks he can save anything. Just like you always wanted to do, the angry or Digimon thought while waiting for his thugs. I see. So you're the one who aided Tapperman and the others when the Gobbleman attacked. Thank you. I am C. Sarman. I'm one of the oldest Digimon in this village, the Beast Digimon says with a bow of his head. Izuku returns it and asks about the other troubles in the region. The old dog sighs before saying, These regions have always attracted those who enjoy a good fight. And there have also been those who simply wish to live and mine the stones to make tools. Thus a violent or extortionist mentality could easily begin. That doesn't make it right, or that you should back down from them. Monoderman says with an angered look. C. Sarman doesn't disagree, but he notes that they may not have a choice. The one backing the Gobbleman is a very powerful ultimate. He's wiped out a few Gotsuman villages that tried to stand up to him. Hackman and Izuku both have contemplative, yet still angry, looks on their faces as they consider what Cesarman is talking about. Hackman asks if there were enough who could fight against their armies. But the dog confirms there aren't enough. I'm old and pretty strong but I'm one of the few fighters here. Most of the Gatsumen are just miners or refinners, and the others are just, well, Tapperman interrupts and says, supporters or feeders if you will. We don't have it in us to fight, like the Bergerman families. Sukaseman wonders if they could fly away or something, but one the Gatsumen takes offense to that. This is our home. We can't just pack up and leave. Another brings up that they also can't fight either, but luckily, they don't know we're here. So, we're safe. Izuku thinks to himself that the Gatsumen just raised a major red flag as they are offered a place to stay for the night. 
and they all enjoy hearty burgers and fries from the burgerman and potterman, and then getting a good night's rest. While staying in a small guest house, Izuku takes to brushing Tsukeman, who squeals a bit happily at the feeling. Monoderman though looks out at the town and worries about what could come. I know they and I said they were probably safe, but I wonder for how long. He thinks aloud. Hackman agrees and says, I hate to say it, but we aren't at the level where we can fight an ultimate. It might be better to leave for now. Come back when we can get some help. Izuku hasn't said anything, but he keeps running through the scenarios in his mind, sighing to himself as he keeps coming the same conclusion. There's no way to avoid a fight and there's no way we can win said fight. I doubt I could negotiate with them to calm down without at least equal amounts of force. Before he can talk with his partners about it though, he notices a rumbling that is making the water in a glass shake. He tells all of them to be quiet for the time being. Something big is coming, he says as he blows out the light in the room. He peeks out a window and tells Monoderman to watch the door. The mini dragon nods before taking his position, barely opening the door a crack to look out. And that is when he sees a frightening sight. At the front of the village were not one, but a dozen ogremen. But they weren't alone. There were also at least six fugemen and ten hyagemen and a few nanemen, with a wizardman standing next to Gogmaman, the latter of which towered over his troops. I think we just met the big boss, Monoderman says with a gulp. Izuku quietly sneaks over and sees what he means. He rests his back against the wall before quietly saying, Yep, we are not gonna beat that thing. The massive Digimon talks down to all of the others in the village, mocking the fact that they thought they were safe. But I've known you were here all along. I also know that a friend of yours knocked around and deleted some of my men. I want you to hand them over right now. Izuku looks to Hackman and silently tells him to be ready to digivolve. C. Sarman steps forward and speaks on behalf of his village. You are talking about the human, yes. It is true they were here, but they left down the mountain. They suspected your likely wrath. Kogmaman narrows his eyes before bending down to look the beast Digimon in the eye. He could tell it was holding something back but chose to wait on acting. All right, then here is what's going to happen from now on. He'll provide a portion of your minerals to us, and in exchange we'll protect this village. Understood. The Mountain of Crystal says with a narrowed look at Seasarman, who nods before thanking the village's new overseer. He leaves a few of his thugs in the village and takes his leave. Crap. Well this is a fine mess we're in, Hackman says as they hear the steps of Gogmaman fading out. Tapperman slips in to convey the message Seasarman had for them. You need to get out of here now. It's not safe for you or us. Izuku nods and says they were thinking the same. No way we can fight these guys. And I bet there'll be repercussions if they know we're being hidden. Can't we do something? Tsukeman asks with a bit of sadness in her eyes. Izuku looks down before saying, No. Not now. But maybe someday soon. We're just not ready. He pats her head while having a look that says he feels sick leaving things as they are. And she tucks into him to try and comfort the boy. Hackman agrees and wonders how they could get out with those thugs at the gate. Leave them to me. A hearty bowl of soup and they'll be out. As well as my own abilities. Tapperman says before excusing himself once more. He and a few others make a meal for the visiting virus Digimon and they are quickly conked out. And Izuku's team can be snuck out with less to worry about. Seasarman sees them off one last time and tells them not to worry about them. We'll survive. And with some luck we'll be able to fight back eventually. Izuku nods before thanking the beast Digimon. Tsukeman flies out of Izuku's arms to hug and nuzzle the big dog. Goodbye, she says sadly as they quickly make their way out of town and down the mountain. While all of this has been happening, Terry has been watching from above and away from the main action. A new partner, a reasonable conflict, and a compelling drive to get stronger and more teammates. I'd say that's a good week's worth of learning, he says to Allforce, who looks ready to swoop down and deal with Gogmaman himself. But he is stopped when Terry says, I miss this because we've got a lot to worry about. If Izuku intends to become the guardian of these regions, he'll have to make choices like this for himself. His old partner looks annoyed but can follow some of the logic. I just hope they'll be ready for it. After running and flying all night, Izuku and his partners have returned to the forest and meadow regions, with Izuku wondering what they could do next. We can't help them alone, but there aren't heroes here where we could get aid that way, and I doubt Terry would help. Hackman wants to disagree but all the actions the man had taken thus far had told him otherwise. He was always a good friend and pseudo-partner before I found you again. But now, I think he's taking a tough love path with teaching you, so no help from the other guardians. Great, you guys don't happen to know any other capable Digimon. Do you? Monoderman says with a raised eyebrow. Izuku just shrugs and Hackman shakes his head. Until Tsukeman speaks up. What about Primary Village? You know, Liaman and the Elekman. This makes Hackman and Izuku stop in their tracks as they smack their heads for forgetting about that. He might be able to help. Or could maybe point us to a few others who'd be willing to back us up. Tsukeman says with a big smile. Izuku brings her in for a hug and thanks her for giving them the idea. Izuku's Digivus starts beeping and then it shows a map with a way back toward Primary Village. It would take them half a day, but they made good time to the location. Once there, they brought Lehman up to speed on what happened. I see. That is troublesome. But they aren't coming here. 
even someone like Gogmaman wouldn't threaten this place, Lehman says firmly. Von Erdermann brings up a different point and one to play to his new form and mentality. Yeah, but can you in good conscience leave C. Sarman and the rest to live under the thumb of that guy? Lehman looks the side and thinks it over. He sighs before agreeing that he couldn't. But even if all of you could digivolve, that would only give us four champion-level Digimon. Against an army at the same level, Izuku though asks if there were others who could help them. It doesn't have to be a lot of them. Just enough to give us an edge. Lehman thinks it over, but it is an electman who brings up that there were a few who might be interested. There's a handful of Digimon who dislike those types you're going against in the area. But it could take time to find them all. Hackman notes that it could be a good chance for all of them to improve their skills in trying to find Tsukeman's champion form. Well, you'll have to do some of that back in the human world, Terry said while appearing behind the group. Izuku looked at the man with confusion before he realized that about a week had passed, and then realizing that his mom was probably going to freak out after he'd been camping for so long. Terry just laughed before opening a portal back to the human world and pulling Izuku through. From the trees though was a Digimon who'd just been observing and listening, as well as wondering about the divination they'd had about the human. Izuku ha, an interesting one to be sure, the feminine-sounding Digimon says before leaping away and then disappearing in a flash. Once returning to the human world, Izuku has a moment where he panics as he checks his phone, expecting dozens of messages, only to see one with his mom wondering if he was coming home in the evening, and then realizing it was only one day after he'd left. How, is the only question he can articulate to Terry while looking up at the man. He smiled before saying, funny thing about the digital world, at times the passage of time is out of sync with our own. Some days it will be perfectly in line with the hour to hour. Others, one day here could equal a week or month or more in the digital world. Izuku gave his mentor an annoyed flat look at that before saying, you knew that the whole time and knew that this would be one of the days it would last a week. Terry smiles before laughing and giving his student a simple yep. Monitorman and Sukeman though were interested in the human world and rattled off question after question on the walk home. So where were you the whole time I was surviving in the digital world? Izuku asked after the Digimon had made themselves invisible, checking into a few things as well as dealing with a complicated matter. I've been erasing some of the memories of those who saw the Digimon that day with the slime ball, with some exceptions to make them all sound crazy, Terry says with a smirk. Once home, Inko was surprised by the new faces with Izuku as Monodorman and Sukeman revealed themselves, the woman nearly fainting when Sukeman called her grandma. So it's more that this little one sees you as her father because you protected her egg when she hatched. Inko asked incredulously, and almost fainted again upon seeing the video Terry had taken of Izuku protecting said egg and being saved by other Digimon. But she shook out of that and asked why Terry just let these things happen. He needed to figure things out for himself. Holding his hand doesn't help him grow, but completely abandoning him was not something I did. I kept an eye on him from a distance and if needed I would step in. Izuku quietly thought that it did feel like he'd been abandoned given he had to survive a week in a dangerous wild world like the digital world. But he knew his mom wouldn't accept his partners or Terry again if he said that. So he kept his mouth shut. Graham, I mean Miss and Co. Are you mad about us being here? Sukeman said with a big-eyed look up at the woman, who just melted before wrapping the little creature in a big hug. She then promised to make a big dinner for everyone, with Hackman and Izuku extra happy at that, while Monodorman and Sukeman were curious about what they'd be eating. Terry was even forced to stay as thanks for watching over Izuku and trying to teach him Izuku. Once it was done and the Digimon were rolling around happily fed, Terry helped Inko with the dishes before taking his leave. Izuku, I hope you're ready to learn even more, because this is just the beginning. Terry says with a smile as he leaves to teleport away once more. Izuku meanwhile takes what he said to heart and resolves to get serious on training tomorrow. No POV. With a new day started and it being the weekend, Izuku could take his time to prepare his partners. We've got some serious work to do. Izuku thinks aloud as he was looking at his Digivus and some of what was recorded by it. Looking over the details of Strykterman and Bea Huckman's fight with their respective opponents, Izuku noticed the general way they fought, as well as the weaknesses of the two champions' skills. So Strykterman seems better at hit-and-run types of fighting. Hackman, your champion form seems like an all-around type. Even with your quadrupedal form, you aren't quite as fast as Strykterman. Hackman hums while looking at the replay. You're right, I'm pretty fast, but with my bulky body I'm better at taking some hits and dishing them out more. Strykterman meanwhile is pretty fast and he can hit hard. Monoderman speaks up next by saying he probably couldn't take a hit the same as before. My tenacity was one of the things that infuriated Ogreman and the others. But in my champion form, I don't feel the same kind of tough. Sukeman grumbles while snacking on something. It's nice that you guys have your champion forms. I can't help in this case, she says with some sadness. Hackman and Izuku share a look and quietly agree. Then we help you get to it. Hackman says with a smile. They all head out and find a spot in the woods where they could all practice and grow in skill and technique. With Monoderman taking quests from Izuku's analytical mindset to read when he should attack. Hackman meanwhile uses small fire shots to test Sukeman's evasion. With the little Digimon panicking a bit as she flies around and fires a few of her own attacks back at her brother. 
Izuku meanwhile traded blows with Monoderman while calling upon skills from his Digivus. Impressive. I didn't know humans could use those smaller skills. You seem to like the wind ones though, Monoderman says after blocking a few wind claws. Izuku hummed and wondered why it didn't hurt Monoderman as much as when he fought the Goblin. This is when Terry steps in to talk them through some matters. It's due to his attribute being a neutral type. When it comes to attributes and types, Digimon tend to follow a different pattern, path compared to Pokemon. Izuku gives him a look that he doesn't fully follow. So, he explains the two attribute triangles and then the relationships between the types. They all generally follow a rock-paper-scissors pattern. You knew about virus-beating data and vaccine-defeating virus. And you can already guess the last one. But when you add on fire to the vaccine attacking a wood virus, you triple the damage. Or the damage is cut down by two divided by thirds for the inverse. But if they are neutral, then they don't have that weakness. Izuku surmises while cupping his chin. Terry nods and then notes the few outliers. Namely the light and dark relationship both doing extra damage to each other. Then there's free types. They are immune, unaffected by the other types. Data, vaccine, doesn't matter. They don't have extra damage to add. Hearing that the green tamer wonders if neutral free types were the strongest. But Terry shakes his head and notes it wasn't that simple. Things in the digital world are with Digimon in general are never that simple or straightforward. Izuku just says, a hub before asking how long they should wait and train. Terry shrugs and says it's not up to him, or not his decision. This is your fight. You want to help them, so you have to be the one to take the lead in this. I'm not sure that's how a mentor-student relationship should work. Izuku says with a flat look. Terry laughs before saying he might be willing to lend a partner. But nothing too strong since Izuku had to be the one to make decisions here. Besides, I have some other things to look into on this side. Izuku nods before getting back to practice, using Nano Machine Break to enhance his punches and creating green blades with Crescent Leaf. Terry then creates a set of targets for Izuku to practice ranged attacks, like Sonic Void, Gaia Element, and Heaven's Thunder. While this was happening, some of Terry's more experienced partners work with Izuku's to help them grow, with a Biyaman trying to bring up Tsukeman's spirits. You'll get there. You just need a bit of motivation and maybe some courage to get what you need. In the meantime though, you do have some advantages the others don't. Sukeman wonders what the bird Digimon was talking about as she took to the air and watched some of the spars. That was when she noticed that Monoderman's partner, a red Vigiman, was leading him into a trap. Look out, she shouted when Monoderman overcommitted to an attack. And he tripped over a route he didn't know red Vigiman was leading him towards. Good catch little girl. I wanted to show him how his straightforward fighting could be a problem. But this works too. Monoderman then waves to Tsukeman and thanks her before focusing back in on Red Vigiman. Tsukeman then looks over at Hackman trading blows and attacks with a Garuman, and warns her brother about a broken branch above his opponent. He smiles before firing an attack that drops the branch on Garuman's head. You see, you have a different advantage compared to them. Biyaman says while flying next to Tsukeman. The younger Digimon smiles and thanks Biyaman, and the two fly around a bit to get Tsukeman ready for any other trouble. Izuku wants to go back right away, but he knows they don't have enough experience. So, he decided to go a different route after questioning Terry about something he could do. You know how to make. I've got no other word for it but a hyper-time chamber. Don't you? Izuku says after two days of practice. His mentor smiles at him before asking Izuku what made him think that. You can create portals and can roughly tell when the digital world is in sync or out of sync with our own. I find it hard to believe that you wouldn't have found ways to do similar in all the years you've been a tamer. Terry laughs at that before saying he did know a way. But there is a catch. I can't do it very often and in the same place twice. Izuku tells him that was fine. We can find other places to practice. Other areas hidden from most people. So long as we can get what we need in time. The older guardian looks down at his student before a slightly bitter smile comes across his face. He's a lot like Yutoshi. I wonder if he'll. Terry thinks before saying he could only accelerate the forest area they were in a day relative to an hour. After that, we need to find somewhere else. Izuku nods and asks the man to do it. And thus, Izuku gets an extra day's worth of training added to the day he and his partners spent. The next day they return to Dagaba Beach and Terry could give them a week's worth of training. After that, Izuku gets an extra day after school. For one week. This is it boy. You think you're ready? Terry asked when the week had passed. Izuku was a bit more solidly built now thanks to some strength training from a few of Terry's partners and he had mastered the basics of the elemental skills. Meanwhile, Monoderman and Hackman felt more comfortable in their champion forms and what their weaknesses were. Sukeman though had yet to reach her champion form, but she had grown as a tactician and strategist during the training, as well as mastering aerial combat as well as she could with Biyaman. To give Izuku a little more magical and medical aid, he loaned a Sorkurman to Izuku. It's good to meet you. Let's all do our best in the fight to come. Sorkurman says while extending a hand to Izuku. The boy shakes it and asks Terry to open a portal to the digital world. I think it's time I show you how to do it for yourself. Terry says before asking Izuku to take off his Digivus. He does and the Elder Tamer shows him the combination of buttons to make it work. And Izuku opens the way to the digital world. Remember, this is your fight. Your mission. I'll step in if absolutely needed, but you chose this path. So you have to follow it. 
Izuku nods and thanks Terry for teaching him what he could. And with that, the teen and his Digimon disappear into the portal. I hope this goes well. All four says from Terry's Digivus. The man sighs before saying, me too. Once back in the digital world, Izuku is happy to see they aren't far from Primary Village. Hopefully Lehman has some help for us. Monoderman says with some unease. Hackman though seems positive and looking forward to the new friends. Sukeman kept flying above the group as she had gotten more used to flying constantly and was happy to see that there were some bigger members at the village. Izuku smiles and they all hurry to Primary Village. Lehman, hey. Izuku and Sukeman shout as they run up to the village. The big lion smiles while looking up at the pair arriving, as well as the others. Good to see you again. I wish I had some better news, but I couldn't get many who were willing to fight Gogmaman. We'll have to make do with who we've got. Lehman gestures to a few of the ones who were gathered. The first was a large bird-like Digimon with wings on his back, arms, and legs. He had two katana on his hips and was wearing a kasa hat. Buraemon. This seemed like a good way to improve my skills with my swords. Glad to have you. And you. Izuku says with a look to somewhat nervous-looking little Digimon. It was wearing what looked like armor and shields on both arms. The creature gulped before saying, Hi, I'm Ludomon. Izuku nodded with a look to a stranger-looking dragon Digimon. It was blue with ice covering its head. The red eyes it had showed a bit of cunning and curiosity. It or he was introduced as Blue Common. I'm not actually planning to go up that mountain with you. I'm going to stay here and help the Elekman with protecting Primary Village while Lehman's away. Izuku sighs before seeing the blue dragon's point. Lehman mentioned that he had gone to find others, since Izuku and the rest had been gone about two months or so. But there weren't many who wanted to take on a large ultimate. The good news is that a few others did agree to keep an eye on Primary Village like Blue Common. So I can go with you to help those people, Lehman says before saying they should rest a bit. Though Tsukeman and Hackman had taken to playing with some of the baby Digimon. Tsukeman though noticed that a few of the baby and rookie Digimon had wandered off to the forest. She flew after them as they disappeared into the trees. Little ones, hello, come out. She called out while flying around the trees. She then heard a roar and screams a bit deeper in. She hurries over and sees an angry Tiranaman stomping towards the young Digimon. Tsukeman steals her courage and rushes at the big Digimon hitting it in the head. It doesn't do much but it does distract the beast to let the little ones get a bit away. Come on, keep up big guy. She shouts before firing some of her attacks. It does some damage, but the difference in size and power is too great. Tsukeman gets knocked to the ground again and again. But she keeps getting back up. Just like Izuku. There's a difference between running and retreating. One is because you know you've got no chance. The other is to fall back to fight again. As she thinks this, Izuku feels her emotions from his Digivus and tells the rest they need to help her. Hackman quickly digivolves and Izuku hops aboard. Tsukeman can feel that they are coming, but she wants to finish this herself. Especially as Tiranaman stomps towards its Tsunaman. I'm still right here. And you won't hurt them. Tsukeman shouts as she feels the power from Izuku. The power he helped to foster in her, that Hackman helped her see, and Biaman directed her towards. Tsukeman. Digivolve to. Witchman. The now named Witchman says as she takes to the sky on her broomstick. A touch of mischief gleaming in her now green eyes. Balaluna Gale. She shouts and unleashes a blast of wind at Tiranaman. It knocks the beast back but not down. She puts herself between the young Digimon and the large one and attacks again. Aquary pressure. She shouts as she makes a magic circle and fires a pressurized blast of water. This time she knocks the big Digimon down on his backside. Just as she finished this, Lehman and the rest arrived. Sukeman, is that you? Izuku asks as the red-robed witch flies down to meet them. Yeah, it's me, Papa, Witchman says with a smile and blush. Hackman is happy and proud of Tsukeman and congratulates her. While they were saying this though, Tiranaman shook out of the stun and stood once more. Lehman looks ready to fight, but he notices something one of the rookies had. So, that's what this was about, he says before picking the little one up. And the food it had. He then addresses Tiranaman by asking if he was mad because his food had been stolen. Yeah, I collected a bunch of meat, apples, and other stuff. But they went and ate my whole horde. Lehman gives the little ones a look and says they'll be talking later. He then bows his head and apologizes to Tiranaman and offers some extra food from Primary Village. Witchman also apologizes and also thanks Tiranaman. Even if it was just a misunderstanding, you helped me reach my champion. Now I can help the rest against Gogmaman. Tiranaman nods and thanks them both for apologizing. Once back in the village, Lehman and a few Elekman give the ones who ran off a lecture. And Witchman to Digivolves to Tsukeman once again. You did great, Izuku says as he hugs the little Digimon close. She blushes and laughs as he does, and the others compliment her as well. Hey, your eyes changed. Normally they're yellow, but now they're green. Izuku notices. Tsukeman laughs and says it's just like his eyes. From the trees, there was another being watching. Interesting. She felt inspired by him, and that helped her to digivolve. Perhaps this one could be just what my divination said it might be. The green sight and light. After resting for the night, the group set out. The team of Lehman, Buraemon, Hackman, Monoderman, Sukeman, Sorkoraman, Ludoman, and Izuku. As they were walking up to the mountain village, Izuku could feel there was someone else watching them. You feel it too, Buraemon said while peeking from under his hat. Izuku nods and wonders who it could be. 
His first instinct is that it's someone working for Gogmaman. Would that get pushed aside quickly because he rarely left the mountains from what Monoderman said? Buriaman hums before suggesting that he could catch the person when he gets a moment. The gaze seems focused on you. Perhaps they'll follow you if you go alone, the birdman whispers as the terrain starts to become rocky. Izuku agrees and asks him to be gentle. But I understand if it's not that easy. Buriaman nods as they separate again. Izuku says they should stop for lunch and rest a bit. After they do though, he takes a moment to excuse himself. So, he could use the bathroom. Once away from the rest, he could still feel the gaze upon him. But he could also tell his ally was behind him as well. Though it's a little weird whoever it is, is just watching me pee. Izuku thinks with a blush. Suddenly, he hears a crash through the trees and quickly pulls up his pants before investigating. It is there he sees Buriaman atop a yellow fox-like Digimon. He is holding their arms behind their back as Izuku runs up. Nice catch and good plan. So who is this? This is a Renamon. Not sure why they've got an interest in you Midori Adono. Buriaman says as he pulls the fox up. They grumble before saying, I'm not they, I'm she. And, I do have a reason if you'll let me explain. The human and bird man share a look before the latter shrugs and they take her back to the camp. Once there she gets a bit of food before explaining that she was following something. I've been trying for a long time to grow strong enough to digivolve, but to no avail. Then I tried something I know is related to my line. I used a divination and it showed me something. She sighed before looking at Izuku and saying, a gaze of green will strengthen the land, with the will to quell mountains and settle seas, and empower those close to it. Izuku gives her a raised eyebrow before saying that it sounded a bit cliché. What do you think the gaze of green is me? Because I have green eyes. Renemon shrugs and notes she was going of a bit of a hunch and, while admittedly a bit of, intrigue, interest, not sure which, but something about you does seem interesting. Renemon says while looking over Izuku, who blushes before clearing his throat. He asks if she knows what they were going into and if she'd be willing to help. She doesn't say anything but nods and the group leaves it at that for the time being. Izuku pulls Buriaman away and asks what he knows about Renemon. I don't know much about this one in particular, but I do know what some say about them. They are consummate warriors, very skilled and powerful. Plenty of them have the capability to defeat champions, despite them only being rookie stage Digimon. Izuku lets out a low whistle and chuckles to himself about the situation. A little more than we expected, but it's a good team. Even if Sorkuraman is only going to heal and help at minimum. Still, seven samurai Digimon. Izuku thinks with a little chuckle. The next day the group made it to the village, and they could tell that the last month under Gogmaman's thumb had been a bit hard on them. There were no thugs, but they could see many Digimon with their heads hanging low and sad. Upon arriving, many were shocked and happy. Others were not though. An old Gatsuman stepped forward and greeted the group. You returned. Why, this isn't your fight. Izuku shook his head and said it was their fight. We picked it a bit as is, and he continued it. And I intend that we finish it. The determination burning in Izuku's eyes surprises Gatsuman. But it doesn't lift his spirits. Part of me wishes you didn't come at all. The other part though wishes you'd come back sooner, he says sadly before asking them to come with him. Hey wait, where's Cease Arman? Sukeman asks innocently. A flinch from many of the people in the village tells most of the group what happened. He's gone, isn't he? Is that part of why you wished we'd come back sooner? Izuku says sadly. Gatsuma nods before guiding them to a canteen. He told them that Cease Arman stood up to Gogmaman and tried to rally the rest of them how he could. But it wasn't enough. We lost a few good Digimon. Cease Arman included, the rock Digimon said and told them that he'd taken over to try and lead. But most of them didn't see him as much of a leader. Sukeman cries a bit at hearing what happened to Cease Arman, while the others look down in sadness. Renamon says a quick prayer with Izuku along with her. Before they can process more of those thoughts, they all hear a crash from the mines. Everyone runs out and looks up to see some smoke coming from the tunnels. We need to help them. Izuku shouts before running off to the mine. Hackman and Monoderman follow him as Sukeman takes to the air. Lehman is surprised but quickly follows after them. The other Digimon shrug before doing the same. Izuku looks down the tunnel and sees some of the Gatsuman running out of the mine. And plenty of them were injured. Sorkorman quickly sets up an area to start treating the injured and Izuku took the lead on helping some of the Digimon out of mines. The rest of the Digimon follow his lead and run into the mines. Bea Huckman and Stryterman were exceptionally helpful. The former had more surface to carry injured while the latter was fast and could quickly move patients out. Witchman couldn't fly but she could put out some of the flames with her water spells while the other large Digimon carried everyone out. Renamon was almost as fast as Stryterman and was helping who she could out of the mine. Is there anyone else inside? Izuku shouted as one of the Gatsuman mentioned that there were a few much deeper in the mines. But the flames were in the way. I couldn't put them out. What do we do? Izuku tightened his fist before telling Stryterman and Witchman to come with him. Wait, are you really going down there? Ludaman says with a gulp. Izuku is clearly scared but he takes a deep breath and says he is. Ludaman is shocked but he tightens his fist before leaping at Izuku. In a flash of light Ludaman changes into a new form. I'm a legend arms Digimon, and this is my arms form. I'll do what I can to keep you safe, Ludaman says from within the shield. Izuku nods as they head down to rescue those still trapped in the mine. 
No POV. Izuku grunted as he and Ludaman went deeper into the mine shaft to rescue anyone else. Strykerman and Witchman were close behind him and keeping an eye on the stability of the tunnel as they hurried down. Needed as the ground was still rumbling as they carried on. Look out. Ludaman shouted as part of the ceiling started to come down. Izuku quickly put the legend arms mon up to block the falling rocks. He barely felt the impact as the stones fell and once it was done, he checked Ludaman's surface and saw no damage. Impressive. This will be really helpful. Izuku exclaims before they all head deeper in. They see the burning rock area they needed to get through and Izuku kept his shield in front of him as the blaze roiled out. I'll handle this. Aquary pressure. Witchman calls out and tries to cut through the flames as fast as possible. But it won't be snuffed out that easily and keeps rising as she blasts the fire. Let Izuku see something that could work for them. Strykerman get ready. Witchman, focus your attack on the right side and mix it with Baluna Gale. Izuku calls out before counting a few seconds. And when he saw it once more, he told Strykerman to move as fast as possible. Right, the Dragon Digimon says before sprinting through the quick gap Witchman made. His sprint let him get to a few of the stranded Gatsumen. But he had to wait to feel Izuku's intent for him to sprint back again. There's a few of them still down there. And the ceiling is coming down. I don't know if I can get them all out fast enough. Then we'll keep them covered. I'll go with you next time, Izuku says before climbing on Strykterman's back. He holds Ludaman in front of Strykterman's body before nodding to Witchman. She returns it before blasting through the flames once more and gives the trio their opening. Once on the other side, Izuku sees some of the rocks about to fall on some of the injured Digimon. And his body moves on its own once more, this time aided by the Digimon on his arm. He cocks his arm back and throws the shield Digimon with all the strength he could. And while he freaks out, Ludaman goes along with it to bash through the falling rocks. After that, he adjusted himself mid-flight to impact the walls to bounce back to Izuku. Well that was weird, but I'm glad it worked, Ludaman says with a slightly shaky tone to his voice. Izuku lets out a chuckle and notes he was surprised it worked. He then communicates to Witchman to tell her to start her attacks again, waiting for the moment and sending Strykterman through when she had made their opening. But before they could start again, the cave started to collapse once more. Izuku grit his teeth and held Ludaman aloft to protect the still injured Digimon. Izuku, we can't hold out, Ludaman says while straining from the way to top him. But the boy doesn't buckle and says, I'm not letting them die. We will save them. Ludaman feels Izuku's dedication, courage, and will in his words. And it makes the legend arms Digimon tremble, and his own courage build with it. He feels this strength in him and the little shield glows. Ludaman, Digivolve 2. Tia Ludaman. Suddenly the former green shield in his hands is blue and seems to be projecting a force field around Izuku and the few injured Digimon. Izuku, I think we can walk out now. Trust me, the shield says as he increases the size of the field to move them forward. Got it, stay close, Izuku says before addressing the injured Digimon. Some pick up those who can't walk, but they all get as close as they can to Izuku and Tia Ludaman. Izuku takes a deep breath before stepping into the flames. And just as the shield arms promised, they could walk through the blaze. Izuku gives him a quick thank you and they work their way toward the partners on the other side. Papa, Witchman cries when Izuku and the Digimon finally get past the fire. She runs over and hugs him with tears in her eyes. I'm okay, I'm okay, thanks to Tia Ludaman here. Izuku says while patting Witchman's head. He holds up the shield Digimon and he transforms into his new state. With a lupine chest plate and helmet to match his new state. When you refuse to back down or buckle, that flowed into me. And it helped make me stronger. Izuku thanks Tia Ludaman and thanks the Legend Arms Digimon again before saying they needed to get the rest out of the mine. Once out, most were celebrating that most everyone was safe after all that happened. We don't have much, but we will be more than happy to share it with our saviors, the old Gatsuman says with a smile. A hero Digimon thanked the elder and enjoy some good food that they had stored. During the dinner though, Izuku and Lehman started discussing ways to fortify the village. It's both a good and bad thing this place is in a valley of sorts. The high walls mean we can predict where they will likely come from. But it also limits what we could counter, and leaves us open if they attack from above some way. Right Lehman? Izuku says while eating and sharing a bit of food with some of the little Digimon. Lehman sighs and agrees before asking how Gogmaman's forces usually handle intimidating or collecting from their village. Gatsuman sighs before saying, they usually come once a month. A few of the goons will arrive and stay a few days before taking a large amount of our stores of ores and food. Not to mention helping themselves to plenty of the latter. The lead two nod and ask how many of the villagers would be willing or able to fight. The elder can only say that they still didn't have anyone who wanted to or would be able to fight as most were lost when Cesarman stood up to Gogmaman. Izuku hums before asking if they could get the less combat-capable ones out of the village. That way there would be less threat to your people, and we could try and set up more of a defense for this town. The elder sighs before calling for a female Gatsuman and asking if she could gather those who didn't or couldn't fight and get them away. I hope you have something of a plan, he says after the other Gatsuman leaves. Izuku smirks slightly and says, I've got a few ideas on how we can make our position and the surrounding area work for us. Over the next few days, many of the younger or those who had no combat skills were escorted away. Sorceriamen acting as guard and would return to heal after the first battle. 
while a handful of Gotsumen and a Minotauruman worked to dig and build some fortifications and other ways to disrupt the enemies when they arrived, with some like Liaman helping in the matter. Others like Renemon and Sukaman stuck to scouting the area to make sure there were no others on their way, only for Buraman to find a group of five that were discussing who or what they saw in the village, and he quickly dispatched them with his Tsubame Nimai Gishi strikes. I'm not sure if that was the best, but if nothing else it will give us more time and an element of surprise before they arrive. Izuku muses after helping in some of the mines and then with the fortifications. Buraman agrees and says he'll keep an eye further up the mountain. Liaman stops him though and suggests that he stay closer to the village. We'll need your swords soon enough. Renemon is plenty stealthy and Sukeman is a pretty capable flyer. The bird swordsman seems unsure, but he can see the wisdom in the matter. So, he helps to train a few of the other Digimon with blades in reinforcing the buildings in the village. Not three days after Buraman dealt with the goons, a group of Ogremen and Hyagamen were marching toward the village, with a Fugaman leading them wearing some sort of armor or gear. At least that was what it looked like. Perhaps it's a way to denote rank. Renemon reported on one knee before Izuku, who just sighed and said she didn't have to do that. But thanks for the report. We don't have much time. The various Digimon agree and get ready for the fight to come. Izuku asks Liaman to stand up front to address the Fugaman. Might be better that we don't note that I'm here and maybe boosting others. More of an element of surprise. Liaman nods and agrees. I think that's some of why I digivolved. I felt a bit inspired by you. So I'll keep their focus on me for now. The boy nods and hides up by the mine shafts to watch and then suggesting his main partners digivolve, including Ludaman to Tia Ludaman. I'm much faster in this form, so I can cover people down with Liaman, the shield Digimon says with a nod. Good call. Witchman, stay up high until needed. Bay Huckman, Strikerman, head for the other mine shafts. Only rush out once the fighting starts. I'll fire off any blasts or attacks if needed. Izuku says with a determined look in his eyes. The trio nod and take their positions. Izuku meanwhile brings his goggles over his eyes to watch the entrance to the village and calibrates them to listen in. As the Fugaman steps forward with his horde around him, we had feeling when others not come back. How many here? It grunts out while looking around the entrance. Enough, is all Eamon says before commenting that the walls and the like weren't to keep them out. It's to keep you in place. Eamon says with a glare down at the horde as he lands atop a house. You think you're going to stop us? You not know what happened to C. Sarman. We know enough. And that's all the more reason to fight you. Tia Ludaman says brandishing his claws and shields. Renemon then pops in and says, We will not allow you to keep terrorizing these Digimon any longer. Fugaman snarls and looks all around, seeing that there were fewer people around, and that even some of the Gatsumen looked ready for a fight. Izuku mutters out a wait for it while preparing a sonic void shot. High up in the air, Witchman takes aim with her spells to take out some goons. Evil Hurricane. Sonic Void. Fugaman and then Izuku call out. He keeps hidden, but his attack impacts the black attack he sent toward Liaman and the beast Digimon quickly draws his sword and rushes the only like Digimon. The rest of the goons scatter and attack the village, only to be met by attacks from the rest. Tealudaman quickly rushing a few to block and then leave the thugs open to strikes from the Gatsuman. Some go after the food stores, but Renemon is quickly on them, dispatching a few before they can react. Other leap up and use their weapons, but Buraman is more than ready and quickly counters their clumsy skills. From up in the air, Witchman starts raining down shot after shot of her spells, with Izuku firing some as well. And when the ogre and Hyagaman try to find out who is attacking, Bay Huckman and Strykterman quickly rush them. Fugaman tries to hold Liaman in place to attack, but Izuku keeps him covered by using a trick he was still working on, and calling upon a rune forest attack to knock down the group of Hyagaman that attempted to take him out. The others deal with many more of the invading Digimon, and Liaman uses his Fist of the Beast King to knock out Fugaman. Due to this, the rest of the monster-like Digimon start to flee, with Burai and Witchman following them from the air to make sure they had gone with some falling into the traps the miners had set and leaving them open to Witchman's spells. Izuku came out to see the damage and results, assured that the fight was done. At least for now, he mutters under his breath. Liaman and the rest nod and note that he did good with covering them. But Fugaman wasn't taking his defeat lying down. He waited for the right moment and leapt at Liaman with his club raised high. Izuku saw it in slow motion and then surged forward himself to intercept, with Tealudaman attaching to his arm as he charged. The boy blocks the club attack and charges up a wind claw in his free hand and then thrusts forward to spear the virus Digimon on his arm. Izuku didn't fully realize what he'd done until he heard the virus Digimon gurgling. Human, stronger than look, and with that Fugaman was deleted and his data set to return to primary village. Izuku meanwhile was shivering and looking at his hand in a bit of terror. Izuku, Bea Huckman shouts before turning back into Hackman. The boy seemed scared for a moment, as if he thought he'd kill his old partner. But said partner stops that thought by putting his claws atop Izuku's hand. Izuku, calm down, you just reacted right. And even if you don't like the idea, it still works out. Given what we're dealing with, Fugaman will be reborn and he'll have a new chance to be someone different. But for now we need you here. Izuku looks into Hackman's eyes and it helps to calm him a bit. He lets out a ragged breath before thanking him and Tia Ludaman. The legend arms changes back before to Digivolving and saying it was no problem. 
Buriman and Witchman report back soon after and everyone takes time to recuperate. Buriman, could you get sore Corman? A few did get hurt. Runeman asks before helping to heal a bit herself. The bird Digimon nods and quickly takes off to get the spellcaster. While the village was recovering, the few who got away reported to Gogmaman. So, there is a new human here, and not one like the usual guardians. We need to take him, then we can become even stronger, the massive crystal creature says before standing from his throne. Are you sure, sir? It seems like it might be more trouble than it's worth. Wizardman asks with a little worry. But the glare from Godwoman cowed him and he went about bringing together the troops. A large Digimon looked down at his hand before crushing some stones in it, making diamonds to add to his body. He let out a tempered but still angry breath before talking to himself. Perhaps I could finally reach the stage we aimed for. Tashinori. But he pushes past the thoughts and focuses in on being the intimidating thug to keep his men in line. Once the village had been repaired, the elder was ready to celebrate at the idea that they had run off the oppressors. It's not that simple. They'll be back, Yuriman says with a frustrated look on his face. Liaman agrees and suggests they get ready for the next fight. First things first, we've still got injured, Izuku says while helping Sorkuriman and Renemon with treatments. They keep working and try to reinforce the defenses of the village. But something unsettling happens a few days after the fight. She's not back yet, Yuriman reports after flying around the area and scouting. After most of the injured had been treated, Renemon took to scouting again to prevent possible new attacks. But that was over a day ago. Izuku was tapping his foot and let out a strained breath before standing. Hackman and I'll go looking for her. But in the meantime, you should all be ready for what is likely to come. Izuku says with a look to Burai and Liaman. Outside he talks with the two and notes what he thinks might happen. Gogwoman has an interest in me. He could be using this as a way to get to me. So be ready for an attack here. The two agree, and Buraiman says he'll shadow Izuku and Hackman. Just in case, Tsukaman there is a capable flyer on her own. Not to mention she's a good shot with her attacks. Izuku agrees and tells his partners to get ready. They all digivolve, including Ledarman who had recently asked to stay with Izuku. I think I could really embody what I'm supposed to be if I stay with you, the shield legend arms had said with a nervous look. But Izuku was more than happy to have him along. Keep them safe. It's what you do, Izuku said to Tailoraman. The blue armored Digimon smirks and says, of course. I plan to do no less. With that Bea Huckman and Izuku take off to check the area Renemon had been scouting. And just as Izuku predicted, the Ogremen and other versions started swarming and attacking the village. Each of the warriors fought hard, but they were outnumbered. Until those who had been sent away for safety returned and started to fight back as well. Some were deleted, but others put in some strong hits to turn the tide and give Lehman and the rest the support they needed. Using picks, shovels, and their own attacks to fight back. Even if that just involved using onions and burger patties to throw off the horde. Hold out a bit longer. They'll run out sooner or later. Strykterman shouted after going through a few oni. And while Witchman had planned to cover them with her spells, she was currently fighting Wizardman. And, he's trickier than I thought. He was just a goblin right. That somewhat smarter one. Witchman thinks while dodging magical game and thunderball attacks. Firing back with her own spells. But it is during one of their exchanges of fire, she notices something. Every so often, Wizardman would glance toward the village, seeming pensive about the fight he was compliant in. She took advantage of this but didn't fully defeat the magical Digimon. You don't want any of this, do you? She asked as she floated down to the disarmed Digimon. Wizardman looks up at her with some shock but then to the side in a bit of sadness. It doesn't matter what I or the others want. Dogmaman is the boss. We follow his lead in orders. Even if it, even if it costs you all your lives. What good does that do? Sure he's strong, but that won't make things better for you. The younger Digimon exclaims. She notes that he may have forced Wizardman and the others to digivolve. But that didn't mean they owed him anything. And while he still looks like he wants to fight, Witchman's words get through to him. He asks how it was any different from what Izuku did for her and the others. He doesn't force us to digivolve against our will. We each were inspired in some way by him. His courage, his spirit, his compassion. That helped us reach heights we couldn't before. This inspires Wizardman a bit more. Enough to where he tries to rush over to the village to convince the remaining ogre Digimon to stop. With Witchman giving him a lift. Stop. Everyone. Stop. Wizardman shouts as they arrive. He appeals to the few of his brothers that remain to stop. While plenty are still looking for a fight, Wizardman gets their attention and gets them all to focus on how they had been living in fear of Gogmaman for so long. We've been his tools and puppets for so long. But perhaps with all of them, we could defeat him. You're supposed to be smart. We can't beat Boss. Maybe we can if we digivolve. That's still not enough. Remember, Boss beat previous Boss when he was just a Goldman. The various Oni Digimon toss these statements around. But a few thought about the matter and were willing to side with Wizardman for the time being. Maybe that human can stop the boss. Maybe he could undo what boss done to us. We wait and see what happens next. If nothing else, the fight in the village has gained a bit of a reprieve. With Izuku though, he and Bea Huckman had been searching for an hour with little luck. Same for Buraiman. I can't see much from the treetops. I'll search down here with you, the bird says while drawing his swords. Izuku nods and tells the group to split up but stay close enough to hear one another. They keep walking and searching for Renemon. I don't like this. It's too quiet. 
Bay Huckman says while moving through the trees, only to be waylaid by a tree he didn't see coming. Izuku hits the ground after this as another tree goes over his head. One goes at Buraemon but he slices it to pieces. Bay Huckman, I'm okay. We should follow the path of that attack. The three say and the two still standing take off to find Gogleman. Sort of. He had buried himself in a clearing and made Wizardman conceal him more with his magic. And in his massive hand was Renemon unconscious. Curse refraction. He calls out in beams of light fire from his various crystals and kicking up dust all around. Once the attack was done, the trees all around had been wiped away. Some are currently sitting atop Bay Huckman. Buraemon was dazed after that attack and only Izuku was still standing. He was scared as the massive crystal stalked up to him, but he tried to not let it show. A human, a young one, capable of truly bonding with us. Aside from the other guardians drifting about, I haven't seen one in years. Gogmaman says this while leaning down to look Izuku in the eye. And the boy sees his reflection in golden eyes of his foe. Let her go. We can work something out. Izuku says while trying to appeal to the large Digimon, who just laughs and tells Izuku he's in no place to barge him. I hold this fox, and my troops go to take care of your little rebellion. He bellows before telling Izuku what he will do. Work for Gogmaman and make his troops stronger, as well as finally getting past the hurdle Gogmaman was aiming for, to reach the level of Mega. Izuku smirks before saying, what makes you assume they'll win that easily? There will always be those who push back against tyranny, even if it takes time. Gogmaman growls at Izuku and is ready to make his demands again, but this was a partial distraction. Buraemon had regained consciousness and saw some of Izuku's subtle hand movements while he was talking with Gogmaman. The bird turns his blades around before rushing as fast as he can at the giant beast. But he doesn't go for the head. Instead he bludgeoned the hand Gogmaman was holding Renemon with. Izuku, here. Buraemon shouts before kicking the fox toward the teen. He catches Renemon and then fires a sonic void shot at Gogmaman's face to give Buraemon a chance to escape which he does and strikes the monster multiple times while Izuku alternates between healing Renemon and attacking Gogleman. Bea Huckman jumps in next and uses his team blade and fifth cross to do some more damage around the body, causing a handful of cracks. But the big boss has had enough and uses a downward punch and a curse refraction to kick up more dust, blinding Buriman and leaving him open to his signature attack. Giant Greater. Gogleman shouts before bringing his arms down on Buriman. The samurai bird sees this coming, but he can't get out of the way in time. So instead, he makes one last desperate play. He throws both of his swords in opposite directions. The first is toward where he roughly thinks Izuku and Renemon are, and the second is on an open crack he could see in Gogleman. Buriman smiles a bit as the hammer comes down and thinks about his pursuit of growing his skills with his swords. Perhaps we will meet in my next life, and we could help each other grow together. Buriman thinks as the attack hits hard, deleting him. Renemon was waking up as this was happening and both she and Izuku were shocked by what happened. The fox Digimon grit her teeth as she tried to stand and avenge Buriman. You can't you aren't healthy enough. Izuku says while holding onto her. He then fires a few more sonic void shots at Gogleman, but he seems more annoyed by them. And Bea Huckman is barely making a dent and is sent flying once more. You're more trouble than you are worth. Gogleman roars as he prepares to crush Izuku and Renemon. The boy shoves Renemon out of the way of the attack and even though he is sure this is the end, he doesn't let Gogleman see him scared. He puts on a brave smile to try and say it would be okay. This new surge of courage flows into Bea Huckman once more. His body glows and starts to change. Bea Huckman. Digivolve to Savior Huckman. The now named Savior Huckman shouts as he crosses his arms and the shield like sections pop out red blades. He is completely upright this time and still has the same red cape from before. But what he is standing on makes little sense. That being legs made of blades, seems like I've just closed the gap. Time for round two. Savior Huckman says before pushing Gogmaman back. Now POV. Gogmaman was sure that he had everything planned out. It should have been easy to take down a bunch of champions. I've built myself up over centuries here in the digital world. But this boy Guck. The giant of crystal and stone grunted as Savior Huckman stabbed him in the stomach with his tail. It didn't pierce his crystals, but it did hurt. Izuku, you okay? The ultimate level Digimon asked while keeping his eyes on his opponent. Yeah, I'm good. I'm getting Renemon out of here. Can you handle this? With the courage you empowered me with. I can keep going and take this asshole down. Savior Huckman says before brandishing his blades. In a narrowed eye at the giant, who roars and goes to smash the dragon warrior Digimon. The two ultimate level Digimon clash as Izuku runs to a safe distance. Not happening. I'm not losing anyone else. He exclaims when Renemon asks that she be left behind. Even when she asks again as some stones from the fight launch toward the two. Sonic Void. Izuku shouts as he unleashes an attack to shatter the incoming boulder. A glare of determination burning in his eyes. The fire burning within stirs something within the fox Digimon. And she pushes herself up to launch a diamond storm to stop a different boulder. If you aren't leaving me, then we should keep moving. Izuku nods and helps to move her further from the battle taking place. Gogleman roars before unleashing a curse refraction attack and blasting the area around him and Savior Huckman. But the dragon Digimon evades and uses the launch stones to leap around and get above the mineral Digimon. Lead strike. He calls out as he dives down with his bladed legs first, cutting and stabbing at Gogleman where he can. Huh. 
You think your puny blades can pierce me? Gogwoman shouts as he swipes at Savior Huckman, who blocks and rolls out of the likely follow-up. The mountainous Digimon brings up both arms to try and slam down on Savior Huckman, but he throws him off balance with a barrage of meteor flame shots from his mouth. Trident Saber, Savior Huckman exclaims, hoping that it would be enough to cut through the thick stones, but Gogmaman blocks and uses Curse Refraction to throw off any more attacks. Damn it, I'm not really taking any hits, but I'm not landing any meaningful hits myself. I need an opening. While Savior Huckman was thinking this, Izuku had gotten himself and Renemon above the fight to observe, as well as to listen in on Gogmaman trying to sway Savior Huckman. Why do you follow that human? They don't truly care for this world or us. How can you say that? Izuku came back to help and protect those you were taking advantage of, Savior Huckman says while renewing his assault. Kogmaman exclaims that he knows it all too well. I once believed in humans, or at least one human. We sought to grow together, to become protectors of these regions. But he abandoned me. He left me behind. Weren't you just the same? This makes Izuku and Savior Huckman stop for a moment and think back on what had happened between them. He's right that I did leave you behind, but not on purpose, and I'm not walking away now. I'm not going to leave you or any of the others alone, Haku. Izuku thinks after hearing the Crystal Digimon's rage and claims. Savior Huckman feels these thoughts and emotions, and he smiles because of them and the hope it could represent. To go past what I started as. To grow into being a true hero with Izuku. That is why. I will stand with him. No matter what. Trident Saber. Gogmaman snarls at the Dragon Knight Digimon and calls him a fool before revamping his attacks. Izuku keeps the battle in his sights and looks for some way to help his old friend and partner win. I'm not just going to stand on the sidelines. We'll find a way. He exclaims as Renemon finishes recovering. She can feel even more of that same determination and puts a comforting paw on Izuku's shoulder. Then maybe I can help to make it so. Renemon says with a slight smile and feels the Izuku's will fill her with power. And it finally unlocks something she had been missing. Renemon, Digivolve 2, Yaokaman, what used to be a small yellow fox, was now a purple nine-tailed fox. Large enough for Izuku to ride. Let's go Izuku. While the green-haired teen is surprised, he's also happy and hops on Yaokaman's back. Let's go. He commands and the newly awakened champion leaps toward the fight anew. Savior Huckman meanwhile had been looking for an opening or any kind of weak point to exploit. Look out. Izuku shouts as Yaokaman unleashes a few rounds of tail flames to impact on the crystal Digimon's body. You think that just because you are here Ak, that you are oof, that you gak, will you stop it? Dogmaman shouts as the human and beast Digimon run around him while unleashing attacks, tail flames, as well as sonic void spheres and ice archery shots. When Gogmaman charges up to use his curse refraction once more, Savior Huckman rushes in with a few kicks before using Meteor Flame to shoot the mountain of crystal in his face. It is during this assault, Izuku finally notices something. Look there, in his side. Doesn't that look like? Indeed it does. Perhaps Buryman did more than buy his time. Yaokaman proclaims before asking Izuku to create as many sonic void orbs as he could. And he does just that before sending an alert to Savior Huckman. Got it. Just get me the opening. Gogmaman snarls and demands to know what they were talking about only to be surprised and feel ever-increasing pain in his side from the wind-boosted tail flames. Wait, no. He screamed as the katana in his side was forced deeper into the crack Buryman had created. Gogmaman tries to defend his new weak spot, but Izuku uses a different ability to keep his arms in place for Savior Huckman to make his move. Rune Forest. Bind him. Izuku shouts as a group of roots rip out of the ground to hold Gogmaman's arms in place. Haku. N-O-O-O-W-W-W. Trident Saber. Savior Huckman shouts as he rushes and strikes the cracks in Katana that had damaged Gogmaman's crystalline body. No, Hinooo, I spent so long to get even to this level. Don't take it away. Gogmaman shouts as he feels the cracks expand and compound across his body. Izuku hops off of Yaokaman and creates the strongest sonic void sphere he can. Yaokaman, give him all you've got. Right, Yinryu. The human and Digimon shout as they each unleash their attacks. Yaokaman's looking like a large red dragon of fire, and made stronger by Izuku's sonic void shot and Saver Huckman using his meteor fire attack as well. All of these attacks and damage finished breaking down Gogmaman's body, but instead of deleting him as they assumed, he first turned back into a Golman, still crying out as his body broke again and again, until what was left was just a Gatsuman. What the heck? Izuku muttered as the Gatsuman was laying down on the ground. He took a few cautious steps toward the Digimon, but it barely moved, only vaguely recognizing that Izuku was close now. Just finish me. I've spent too long doing cruel things to try and gain the power I sought. He looks up at Izuku and the boy can see he now had a large scar over his right eye. And while tempted to do that, he lets it go with a sigh. No, this isn't the way to make right what has happened. Izuku says while looking at the exhausted Gatsuman. Hackman agrees and says, some part of you fell apart due to being abandoned. But your spirit wasn't fully broken. You kept aiming for what you dreamed of. Even if it was through cruel or extreme methods. You just need a chance to make things right. Yaokaman agrees and notes that the villagers shouldn't be the only ones who decide. Given they would all be for deleting the Gatsuman. She did digivolves and uses some skills to bind the Gatsuman before they head back to the mining village. 
The group expected to hear more fighting and were surprised by how quiet it now was in the village, with the ogres and wizardmen standing on one side, and Liamon on the other with the villagers and the rest of the team. I take it we've reached an impasse, Izuku asked while looking between the two groups. Something like that. Your girl managed to talk wizardmen down and he convinced the rest. Liamon says with a smile directed Izuku's way. But it is then he notices that Buriman was gone and the tied-up Gatsuman they had. He closed his eyes before saying, I take it that is the boss. Izuku looks back at the scarred Gatsuman and admits he is. Buriman gave his life to make a weak point on him for us to exploit. Made even easier given Hackman reached his ultimate level. Everyone looked at Hackman in surprise and excitement. And the little dragon was shy at first but preened a bit at the cheering. Though it seemed to bring the Gatsuman down a bit. Especially when a few of the miners were glaring at him with the former boss expecting them to start attacking now that he had no power. Same for his former minions. And while some of them did look ready to do just that, Wizardman and the Elder Gatsuman stopped their charges. I take it you thought it best to leave this to others, including his former minions. The Elder Gatsuman says. Izuku nods and decides to play some of the conversation he had with Savior Huckman. Hearing it makes a few sympathetic, as they now saw this big boss as a scared lonely Digimon who was trying to achieve an old dream. And somewhere along the way he lost his way and fell apart. He has done some other good for us when we were goblemen and the like. We were living with nothing and were somewhat jokes to other Digimon. But he brought us together and made sure we were all fed or protected. Even if he started getting more extreme lately, he helped so many of us grow. Wizardman says with some of the ogre Digimon nodding. And while there are some who are tempted to take him out, a few leading ones of each ogre have their own thoughts. A lead Fugaman says, taking him out no fun. The one thing with Monodermen who could take hits all day. But this, he not enough to be a good fight. An ogreman notes that he'd led them more to raid to keep their crew strong and he did find a way to help us digivolve. Something hard to do on normal days, Hayagaman says while resting his ice club down. Hearing all of this makes Gatsuman tear up and quietly thanks some of his former men for still respecting him. When there are some who are still calling for the fallen fiend's blood, someone else steps in. He was once the partner to a person much like myself and Izuku, but that person abandoned him. Everyone looks around until they see Terry arriving on the back of an Airdraman with an Aerovederman flying beside him. He then recalls the Airdraman and asks Sorkuraman if he needed more help healing the injured. No, I'm good. Though to be honest, I could use a break. Come on back, pal. I'll discuss a few things here. Terry says and Soraman nods before disappearing. The dark-skinned man sighs before relaying what he knew about Gatsuman and his history. How he had been a partner to a potential guardian like him. But over 40 years in the human world ago, his partner never came back. Though I'm guessing it felt longer for you. Right, Guts. Gatsuman tears up a bit before saying it felt more like centuries. You know well enough that time is odd here in the digital world. And, I never saw my friend for ages, but I still wanted to make it to our goal, to get to the mega level and try to protect. But, Izuku notes that it got lost along the way from his loneliness and sadness. Then maybe what he needs is to be around others that could help him regain some hope. Liamon suggests while looking at the Gatsuman in question. For his compatriots though, Wizardman and a few of the lead Ogre Digimon have a different idea. Rather than being bullies and demanding resources, maybe we could stay and work here. We've got a few solid bodies Digimon after all, and some good fighters, Wizardman suggests. And while there are a few who are uneasy, there are more of the leaders from the village who like the idea. But not all of the ogre Digimon like the idea and say they still want to fight. But the lead ogres step up and defend Wizardmen and the villagers. Anyone who would be more interested in staying, step up. The rest, while well, you know where the exit is, Wizardmen say while stealing his courage, creating a thunderball in his hand. Only about a third of the ogres stand with him and the leaders. The rest say they'll be back to take what they want and fight how they want. Some things never change. You think you'll all be? Okay. Izuku asks Wizardmen and the older Gatsuman. I think so. Having some good muscle and friends will help to keep us safe now. Gatsuman extends a hand to Wizardman, who takes it and shakes with some hope for a good partnership. I guess it's time we move on. We've got work to do back in the human world. Izuku says with a look to Terry. He smiles and agrees but suggests that they head back to Primary Village. Along the way, a few of the others consider what could be next for them all. While Ludaman had decided to go with Izuku and his team, Renemon and Liamon consider more of what it could mean on the way back the former thinking on her divination and how his courage helped her to digivolve. Liamon though considers how he was also able to digivolve after meeting Izuku, and questioned if, now that he was a Liamon, he still had the same duty to primary village. We electmen took it upon ourselves to guard and care for the babies reborn in the village. But now that I'm much stronger, maybe I should turn my views beyond the village. The two continue to think on this as they make their way down the mountain and look upon the village and forested areas. Once in primary village, Liamon is happy to see all of the little ones. And some of the little ones were curious about Guts who was being watched over by the others. Izuku and Terry relayed what had transpired with Guts and what they wanted to do with him. I've got something to help you keep him in line if you need it. Terry says while looking back at the Digimon who had been another good friend once upon a time. One that he missed with his focus on his side of the world and could have been there for when Tashinori abandoned him. I don't think that'll be too necessary. He doesn't look like the same level of trouble that did before, one of the electmen says with a look to the downtrodden Digimon. 
but Gut seems to lighten up a bit when some of the little Digimon asked if he could play with them, which mostly involved him tossing a ball when they knocked it towards him. Blue Common smiled and said it was good everything worked out. But where's Buraemon? He asked innocently enough. Izuku, Rinemon, and Hackman looked down at that before explaining what happened. Blue Common gave Guts a dirty look before sighing and saying, I guess if nothing else, he would be glad to hear that his plan and attack worked. And if you don't need anything else, I'll be heading back to the cold mountains. The terse way Blue Common said that off put a few of the people around. Terry had an idea what was going on and offered to take the Digimon to his home region. You know how to make portals back, Izuku. But I think a few others want to have a word, he said while summoning Airdraman. Izuku then looks around to see Renemon and Leeman trying to come up with something to say to him. The former seems sheepish or shy about it though, so Leeman goes first. When I first met you, I thought you were someone trying to hurt the little ones under my and the other's care. But I saw your courage and compassion that day and it helped me to reach this level. If you'd have me, I'd like to come with you. To get stronger and maybe save more lives. Digital and human. Leeman's request doesn't really surprise Izuku, but it does surprise the little Digimon who cry as he was going to leave. Izuku then smiles and tells the little ones, we'll be back. Not just to spend time with you all, but because I intend to protect all of you as well. Renemon is relaxed by this atmosphere and decides to make her own statement. I sought a possible way to make myself stronger. A way to grow after hitting the wall of my digivolution. And in meeting you I achieved that. And I can feel that I will grow even more. Besides, I still have to see more of what you can and will do. So far, you've only quelled the mountain. Next is the sea. Renemon says this with a slightly coy and teasing look in her blue eyes. One that makes Izuku uncomfortable but he's glad to have her along. Does this mean I have a big sister now? Sukeman asks after resting atop Izuku's head. Those around have a laugh at that and all Izuku says is maybe. Leeman, Renemon, welcome to the team. Izuku says with his hands extended to the pair of Digimon. Who take it before Hackman, Monoderman, Ludaman, and Sukeman put their own paws and claws in. With smiles and goodbyes Izuku registers the two new Digimon and makes a portal home. Izuku sighed before saying, I know it wasn't that long on this side, but man. That was a rough week. The Digimon chuckle at this while Renemon and Leeman look around in a bit of wonder at the human world. Hackman then advises the two on how to become invisible while in this world. Though with the way Leeman looks, Plenty would think he's just a normal person now. The champion-level Digimon is confused by this, but he gets his answer when they make their way into town. So, these are those quirk things. He questioned with some sideways looks, especially at a person who looked like a large Chewman. He questioned if the people were turning into Digimon or some other kind of monster. Honestly, hard to say. Izuku says as they make their way back to his home, where his mother is waiting to hear what happened, and then shocked by the newest members of the team and family, at least as far as Tsukeman was concerned. And guess what? I can digivolve now. Watch. The little one exclaims as she changes from Tsukeman to Witchman. And Ko seems to have blue screen though and it takes a bit of Witchman's water to wake her up. So this is normal, she asks after taking a sip of tea. Hackman and Monoderman laugh before admitting it was the case. We just go back to our rookie forms because it's easier. Meanwhile, madam, I prefer this state. I feel more comfortable like this, though I won't take up room here given the small size of your home. Lehman says with a slight bow. And while Nko wants to be a good host, she knows that the lion Digimon was correct. Renemon meanwhile intrigued her as the fox seemed akin to the old legends of Japan. I'll spend time outside as well. I want to observe a bit more of this world and I personally can't wait to see what else Izuku can and will do in the future. Renemon says with a nod, and Ko sighs and just says they'll need at least a bit more food for the night. I want to celebrate Izuku and all of you coming home safe. And meeting new members, she says while patting Ludaman on the head. He blushed at the affection and thanked her, saying he'd protect them as best he could, before showing his shield form and attaching to Izuku and Nko. Izuku and his mother were about to go out to get some more food, but sitting outside their door were bags of extra food. With a note attached, thought your mom might want to celebrate. So I thought I'd provide a bit for you all. Terry. Izuku read with a laugh. And Ko chuckled as well and the two humans happily made katsudans for everyone. Elsewhere in Japan, Stain and Seelstroman were hunting heroes and Digimon to purge. And while Seelstroman was originally more interested in boosting his kill count, he had grown close to the villain and began to understand more of his ideals. As well as some of the contradictions to them. Wait Chisholm. I don't think we need to take that one out. Seelstroman said while observing with Stain from a rooftop. They were looking down at the Turbo Hero Ingenium. Stain had been planning to kill or cripple this hero because he was a legacy hero. And why do you think he shouldn't be removed? He's just doing this because it's his job or family obligation. He's not a hero like All Might. Maybe so. But he's also not like the others we've dealt with. Look at the way he carries himself. He doesn't look down on people. He doesn't abuse his position or prance about with it. He commands his sidekicks and gets the job done to save others. Seelstroman says with a discerning eye towards the hero. Stain thinks about the matter for a moment and does concede that Seelstroman has a point. But there are some around him we should deal with. Look over there, Stain says with a point. He spotted one hero who had picked up a purse a woman had dropped and before handing it back to the woman, slipped some of the cash out. Seelstroman saw what he meant and agreed that the dirty hero needed to be eliminated. 
and we might have the best ways to even discredit him after we're done. Seelstroman says with a concealed smirk, and he shows a holo of the actions the man took. Stain smirks before thanking the Digimon. Time to purge another fake. No POV. In the few months following Izuku's team defeating Gogmaman, the group had started a bit of a routine. Namely, Izuku practicing and learning more about his Digimon's capabilities. From the divination and more support types of skills Witchman and Renemon had, to the combat focus that the rest of the team had. Liamon had taken to sparing with Bea Huckman to keep his sword skills sharp. Ludumon meanwhile worked on toughness with Monodramon, in the best ways to take or deflect a punch. They would often also race each other in their champion forms. Strikedramon being better in straight sprints, while Tia Ludumon was better in obstacle courses or runs with turns and the like. In between these training sessions, Izuku was learning a bit from Terry on helping the handfuls of Digimon that were living in the human world. Some had adjusted well enough and would keep to themselves for the most part. But there had been a few cases Izuku had to help solve, such as a group of Red Vigimon messing with the recipes of a few restaurants in town. Either by making the food so hot it actually sent some people to the hospital or causing a few varieties of food poisoning. Luckily this was solved with minimal combat. Just a short food war. That was one of the weirdest things I've ever done. Izuku thought aloud while reminiscing with his mentor. The man let out a hollow chuckle before admitting he'd been involved in a few odd incidents as well. That weird beauty contest thing I got roped into for one. An HG, Terry said with a shiver. Izuku raised an eyebrow before asking what had happened. But all the man said was, let's just say egos in the digital world and beyond are very wide and random. And there are some things that you never want to judge or deal with. The green team could tell he wasn't going to say more, so he left it at that. Some slight good had happened at school though. Well, it was a mixed bag. One day after listening to the normal rantings of his classmates, Bakugo tried to intimidate him with his usual swagger. Even though Mo still remembered Izuku had saved him and that he was a bit on watch from the teachers and others after his actions during the sludge villain incident. D.K.U. What the hell do you think you can do with those stupid notes? And do you expect that little whatever it was to always save you? He taunted after class. Izuku had learned to just ignore him and went back to his notes. Though the current ones were about his Digimon, not heroes. That Hugo swiped one that he was working on and was about to burn it with his quirk once more. But Izuku moved in quick and made the Ash Blonde's body freeze up with a nerve touch. And a bit of diggy power. Why don't you calm down? Don't forget that you are still being watched. Even it's not that closely. Izuku said before packing up his bag. But when the paralysis eased up, Bakugo was shaking with rage. Rage he directed toward Izuku. He grabbed the green-haired team by the shirt and was going to hit him full force with his quirk. Though this was not to pass, and a heavier dose of karma was unleashed on him. In the form of Tsukeman shouting, leave Papa alone. And rushing from the top of Izuku's head as she had just been watching over him all day. The rush of emotions and her anger pushed her to digivolve. But not a normal digivolution. Instead, she jumped up to her ultimate level and attacked Bakugo. The ultimate in this case being Laid-Eyed Vimen. She grabbed Katsuki by the throat with her right hand and slammed him into the chalkboard of the classroom. And when he tried to strike back, she used her massive claw to stab into his hand. The amount of blood and pain he felt would have made Bakugo scream out. Except he could barely get any air due to how tight Late Ivimon was holding onto his throat. Tsukai, let him go. Izuku said in a firm tone after shaking out of the shock of seeing her rapidly evolve. But as she started but the look on Izuku's face put a stop to Late Ivimon's defense. So she pulled back her claw and unceremoniously dropped Bakugo to the ground like he was nothing. She then looked sheepish as she walked over to Izuku, who had his arms crossed looked disappointed with her. Sorry papa, she said with a bit of a pout. Izuku sighed before standing on a chair to pat her head. I know why you did it, but that isn't the way to stop something like that. Even it is all he understands. Late Ivaman seems to melt in Izuku's hands which amazes and freaks out a few more of his classmates. Especially given how Late Ivaman looks. Who? Midoriya. What's with the lady in the, well, gimp suit? One of the boys questioned with a blush, before feeling a mixture of panic and pleasure at the glare late eyed Vimon shot his way. Izuku face bombs before asking if the demon Digimon could change back. And when she did, all the girls that were watching from the outside cooed at how cute Tsukaman was. But the little purple Digimon turned up her nose at them because she'd seen how they all acted. Normally I'd ask how that works, but I'm guessing it had something to do with it appearing out of nowhere right. Something like that, yeah. But you shouldn't assume that she's the only one, Izuku said with an eye roll. That Hugo grunted before demanding to know what that was supposed to mean. He means you should watch yourself, Brett, or you'll have more to deal with than just an angry little Digimon. An almost spectral voice says this before Beck Hugo feels his injured hand being stepped on and his other arm held behind him, and then a set of pressures on his neck. This is when two more fade into existence. That being Renemon, who was standing on Katsuki's hand, crushing a few of the bones while having her claws at his throat to rip it out and Liamon had twisted Bakugo's arm behind the boy with his sword at the brat's jugular. Seeing these two made everyone freak out again, as well as Bakugo feeling like he was about to piss his pants from the rather precarious position he was in. Before the teachers arrived though, all of the Digimon disappeared. 
and when they asked about what happened, most of the teens didn't know what to say. And when Bakugo tried to blame his injury on Izuku, none of the teachers took him seriously, considering Izuku didn't have a quirk and any evidence of the Digimon was removed or non-existent. Especially when Terry snuck in later and erased the memories of most of the teens. Bakugo was the only one he didn't erase and the more he tried to say that Izuku had more of those monsters, the more people thought he was going crazy. Maybe it's due to what happened with that sludge villain. PTSD. If that's the case, I'm not sure he'll make it into UA after all. Yeah, I doubt they want someone crazy. So thanks to that, most of Izuku's classmates left him alone while Bakugo was stuck with a deteriorating reputation. Not to mention, a few had taken video of his attempt to assault Izuku, and it was in the hands of the UA staff. We should probably look deeper into all their applicants from now on, even if this one could be one of the first to possibly be accepted. The one saying this was the rodent-like principal of UA, Nezu. He was sipping tea while reading up on a few of the applicants. Not to mention how certain alumni had been recently revealed to be rather poor examples of what UA stands for. Sai, seems like we may need you to step up the judgment of the student's eraser head. Perhaps you can help to sort out some of the bad apples, the hero administrator said at a meeting of all his staff. The black-haired underground hero nodded before stating his own thoughts. It's kind of sad that we only find out these matters after they die though. Stain kills them and then a bunch of their dirty laundry basically gets aired to show how bad some heroes are. No kidding. It's kind of an insult to the rest of us, and those of us who, who do this to save others. Like Shurikumo, the normally loud hero present Mike said in a disgruntled tone. Aizawa tenses up his fist at the mention of his old classmate but doesn't disagree. The raven-haired heroine Midnight grit her own teeth at the mention of her late underclassmen while the other teachers agreed to monitor more of the students. With Izuku, he was still deciding on what he wanted to do for his future. He fully intended to continue as a guardian of the digital and human worlds. But at the same time, he could see the merits in attending UA, even just as a general course student. With that I can keep an eye on the world or rather the world of heroics, without becoming blinded to it. So that way, I don't end up like the one who left you alone guts. Izuku explained on a trip to the digital world in Primary Village. As promised, he'd been visiting the downtrodden Gatsuman and talked about what he and the rest of the team had been doing. The Mineral Digimon let out a dry chuckle before sharing some of his own stories about what he and his partner Tashinori used to do. From fighting a rogue starman and his posse, to a battle with a Mayatisman which pushed Gatsuman to his original ultimate form. Super Starman. Those were fun times. It does seem like you haven't found whatever it was that made Toshi leave me. And it does seem like you've got more who want to stay with you. Maybe that was what I really needed. Guts rambled before tossing a ball to the young Digimon. Izuku looked at the Gatsuman with some sadness before saying he'd be back another day. Liaman heard this and sighed before saying they had to head back. He'll come along. Eventually, Liaman said with a pat on Izuku's back. That and he may need some help with keeping his thoughts straight. Monoderman said with a look back towards his former enemy. The rookie tamer sighed and agreed with his two partners and just said that he wished Guts would join them. But he pushed some of those thoughts aside and focused on learning more about the digital world. Or at least his region of the digital world. Usually by going on various trips across the region. Even visiting Bilukaman and his more frigid regions. Along with a pack of frigimen that Tsukaman had fun playing with. So he's slightly senile. Figures. I wonder if he even remembers deleting Buraman. The icy Digimon says with a cross look in his eyes. Izuku cleared his throat but didn't disagree with some of Bulukaman's statements. He wondered what it was that the dragon-like Digimon did in these regions. I mostly act as, oh who am I kidding? I just see these people as kind of family. But there was another one though. The ice Digimon sighs before mentioning that Buraman was originally from the same regions as Bulukaman. The two having been long-time friends since Buraman was a Chikaman. Izuku looks down at this and realizes why Bulukaman was upset at hearing Buraman had been reborn. But it isn't like you helped us. Maybe you could have. No, thinking or saying that doesn't change what happened. Izuku thought a bit bitterly. He asked the slightly friendly Digimon what else he knew of the mountain regions. And Bulukaman was willing to show them around the snowy regions. After this, Izuku wandered down to the south and found very tropical views and Digimon wandering about the net ocean area. From Orkaman and Tukaman on the land to Dolphman and Crabman wandering about the waves. Okay this would be a lot of fun. If we weren't here for work. True Izuku. But what can you do? Hackman said while snacking on some noodles from a stand the two Kimmen had set up, which just made Izuku and Renemon face fault at the casual way Hackman was taking everything. Izuku just sighed and asked his old partner to focus while they were checking in on the coastal region. After a few months, it was time for the high school entrance exams, and the one that was the focus today was the UA entrance exam. While most were focused on taking the exam to get into the hero course, Izuku had made a different choice. You sure you just want to go with the general course Izuku? Hackman asked while invisible. But his old friend and partner just smiled and said, Yeah, I think it might be best that I focus on keeping the greater balance. I always wanted to be like All Might, but that can be done in a variety of ways. Liaman gives a hidden pat on his shoulder and thumbs up to say he and the rest of the Digimon were with him. And while Bakugo wants to intimidate Izuku, he knew that there were monsters around him. Even if he couldn't see them. Don't think those. Whatever they are will help you, Deku. 
You won't make it to the hero course. Who says I am? And who said you'd make it? Izuku said with a smirk, which just made Bakugo sputter and try something else to intimidate the green-haired teen, all of which was noted by a few staff members of UA. Neza the lead of which also noted Izuku and how calm he carried himself. The rodan hero scratched his chin while narrowing his eyes at the pair. H.M., even if he does meet the passing requirements, I think we should have that one boy on probationary status. As for the other, I'm not sure what this feeling is, but it's almost as if the air is electric around him. Is it hyperbole or something else, sir? Present Mike asked while looking at the two teens who were making a scene. Well, one teen, the other was just ignoring the arrogant blonde, though he did remember something passed through some gossip. A story Mount Lady and a few others mentioned about seeing monsters that transformed and helped a boy take down a villain. It kept nagging at him, so he finally called up Death Arms to ask him about the boy in question. A kid who leapt in during the sludge villain thing. I think his name was Midoriya. Green hair and eyes. Few freckles. Why? Something up with him. Present Mike shook his head before giving a negative. Just was curious. During the exam, nothing special happened. Despite all the work Izuku had been putting in to try and understand his partners and the digital world, he had kept up his studies and was certain he'd earned a passing grade. It was a bit rougher for Beck Hugo though. Even though the Digimon were told to, and did, leave him alone, the boy could still feel their presence. Especially the one who called Izuku Papa. He'd felt their eyes and similar during classes all the time, despite no one remembering either Hackman or Late Eyed Vimon. It had caused his studies to suffer a bit and it was being reflected in his exam this time. He was having a bit of trouble concentrating and answering the questions. The feeling finally faded when Izuku left after finishing his exam, and Bakugo felt he could finally breathe a bit of a sigh of relief. He didn't feel as uneasy as present Mike explained the rules for the practical exam and what was required. Easy way to show that I'm the best there is. Bakugo thinks while Mike has to answer some inane question. Or at least that is how Bakugo views it when a bespectacled student asked about a fourth villain. Once he reached Site 1, Bakugo felt more assured of his new place at the greatest hero school. At least until he felt a chill go down his spine and then a whisper in the air. You know you don't belong anywhere that involves heroes, he heard. But he was the only one as none of the others seemed distracted. He shook his head to focus, but he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Even as he runs into the battleground and starts attacking the robots, he still feels some eyes on him, which makes him slip up more than once, even endangering some of the other applicants. Not doing too well is he? No, and he's making things worse for the others. Does he have no understanding or respect for collateral damage? Given what Backdraft and the other reported, probably not. These thoughts are brought up and around as the proctors were watching the feeds from each of the battlegrounds. Nezu for one found it odd how nervous Bakugo seemed. He keeps looking over his shoulder. Even though there are no enemies nearby, he mused as the explosion boy beat a three-point robot. With the release of the zero-point robot, the proctors saw even more of Bakugo's true nature, as he ran from the large robot without a second thought and ended up disrupting others to fend for themselves. Wait something's wrong. The zero-pointer shouldn't be actually trying to hit them. Power Loader reported in panic. The robot had badly injured multiple applicants and seemed to be glitching out a bit. But it wasn't the only one. All of the other robots that were just in storage rushed out and started attacking all the applicants. And the heroes could do nothing about it. But there was someone who could. Izuku was about to leave the grounds of the exam when his Digivus started beeping at him. What the? Oh no. He exclaimed. He quickly moved over to make a portal to the digital world. And on the other side they saw multitudes of icemen swarming about the area. This is bad Izuku. They're going to cause untold chaos. And who knows how many deaths. Renemon reports before using a diamond storm to take out a few smaller members. Not if we can help it. Izuku replies and grips his Digivus in fierce determination. This focus flows to all of his partners and they Digivolve. Though some to surprising levels. Savior Huckman was no surprise, but Late Eyed Vimans was. I'm in control this time Papa, and I can use this to save others. She reported with a focused look in her eyes. Izuku sighed before saying okay. But the one who surprised everyone was Leeman, who Digivolved to Grappliaman. Well I'm not complaining about this. I'll blast them away with my Cyclone Fists. Grappliaman reported while revving up the turbines on his arms. Izuku nodded before equipping Tialudaman and running to help the others fight. Each Digimon took to a different region and set of Icemen, using all of their strength to fight back against the hordes of dangerous Digimon. Okay now what? Now the robots are shutting down, and I'm not the one who put out the order. Power Loader exclaimed as scores of robots started to shut down. Though one battlefield was having a different set of problems. In Battlefield 3, Strikterman was having more trouble than he expected. Mostly due to the arrival of a group of Argaman rookies swarming the battlefield. Izuku, I could use some help if you can spare it. The Dragon Warrior called out. Izuku grunted after taking out the last Iceman in Battlefield 2. He calls into the rest of his partners, but they were each struggling. We've got Argamans arriving. Yakaman and I can handle them, but we can't let them run rampant. Grappliaman reported before punching away a group. Right into Yakaman's dragon. Savior Huckman and Late Eyed Vimon were much the same as they were busy with outbreaks. Looks like it's just us, pal, Izuku said to Tialudaman, who nodded in his shield form and said they should hurry to Strikterman. 
When they arrived, the dragon warrior looked exhausted and the flames from his strike fang attack were sputtering out. This is when Izuku threw Tialudaman as hard as he could and struck the Digimon away. What kept you? But also, thanks for the save, Strikterman said before Dedage evolving back to Monodraman. And even though he was a bit burned out, the little dragon still refused to back down, using his claws to fight back against the various Digimon while Izuku struck as hard as he could with shield and skills. There's no end to them. Not quite. They are starting to thin out at our fields, Savior Huckman reported after slicing through a number of the controllers and consumers. Each of the others reports the same and slowly but surely, Izuku notices it in the area he was in as well. Or at least it was until he spotted a rip in the boundary of the digital world. And a few of the Digimon went through, right above the zero-pointer robot. Shit, 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 dies clean up as fast as you can over at your areas. I have to go to the other side. Izuku cursed before opening a portal and pulling himself into the battlefield. There he could see a number of applicants who were hurt and about to be attacked by the Zero Pointer again. Or it was the Zero Pointer. Now it was fused with Iceman in a new form of Argaman. And it was lashing out with its claws toward some of the teens. Izuku's legs moved for him as he rushed in and held Tialudaman aloft and intercepted the attack. Saving a short black-haired girl with odd earlobes who was bleeding from her head. A blonde girl with horns and hooves. A nervous pudgy silver-haired boy who was taking cover. And another black-haired girl who had blue eyes and was the main one about to be crushed by the massive robot. She looked up at Izuku with awe as he held the huge limb aloft and then pushed back against it. As the robot stumbled back, the girl asked, Who are you? Not important right now. Tia Ludaman, get them out of here. I'll try and send this thing back. Izuku said before tossing the shield into the air. And it turned into a creature to everyone's shock. I can't get them all though. He reported before picking up the silver-haired boy and blonde girl. Izuku builds up a bit of power and starts launching it at the Digibot to buy some time. Meanwhile, Monoderman helps the trapped blue-eyed girl by breaking some rocks. This is when the strange earlobe girl limps over to help. We need to get out of here. She exclaims while helping the one girl up. I wish I could, but that thing isn't stopping, and I'm not letting it hurt anyone else. Izuku says while stepping forward a bit. Monoderman winces before laughing and saying, You're just as stubborn as I am, and there's nothing really wrong with that. He walks up next to Izuku before asking if he had a plan. None whatsoever. The two black-haired girls look at the strange pair like they're crazy before one hears something. Even if the chance is small, we have to take it. I may not be aiming for the hero course, but that doesn't mean I can't be a hero in my own right. Izuku says while adjusting his goggles from around his neck to atop his head. This raw determination resonates with Monoderman's own as both start to glow, shocking the pair as well as the spectators. What is happening? How should I? No. It's... Monoderman had started but trailed off as he felt a crazy new surge of power. And almost in a loop, it linked with Izuku, as both lifted their fists before muttering, Biomerge. The light blinded the two girls, and one could faintly make out what they were saying. Monoderman, Biomerge Digivolve to Justaman, and thus a Digimon of heroic standing was seen before the girls, as well as on the recently restored viewing screens to the Proctors. Neither Izuku or Monoderman know what is happening, but they know they can't keep it up for long. Then I have to finish this quick, Justaman shouts. He then charges up electricity in his right arm and blasts away with Justice Burst. Attacks that strip away the Iceman. And when the big Digibot tried to crush the hero Digimon again, he just replied with a Justice Punch. And reversed the momentum of the attack. Justaman leapt into the air and finished the Argomon fusion with a Justice K-I-I-I-C-K-K-K. Kicking clean through the center mass of the large robot and ending the threat of the Zero Pointer and Argomon. To the shock of everyone around them and watching. Tialudaman was also amazed but focused on helping Izuku and Monoderman up after they defused. The two girls were shocked by what had transpired but the blue-eyed girl spoke up before Izuku opened a portal back. Who are you? What kind of hero are you? She asked with a wince. Izuku grunted a bit as he used his Digivus to open a path to the digital world. Let's just say, I'm a different kind of hero altogether. Because I want nothing to do with the mess that comes from quirks. And with that, the trio leave before they could really be identified. Even the ones Izuku saved didn't get a good look at him. But rumors would spread of a strange hero who appeared from a flash of light to save everyone. No POV. Izuku, here honey, a lunch for your first day at UA with the general course, Inko said with a slightly relieved sigh. She was a little uneasy about Izuku going to UA, but she was happy that he had shifted from wanting to be a hero to something more grounded. Smiling as Izuku adjusted his uniform from the top hero school, Izuku smiled at her before saying, Thanks mom. I'll share some of it with Hackman and the others who are coming with me. The little dragon then appears and tells Inko that they'd keep an eye on Izuku. We've got him covered. Monoderman says with a salute of his own, and Ko smiles and pats the little dragon on the head before telling him to be careful. Izuku though thinks back on what Terry had discussed with him after the entrance exam, and the strange digivolution they uncovered. Biomerge. That's new, Terry said with a raised eyebrow. He met with Izuku back in Primary Village after doing some investigations around Japan. When they talked about his and Monoderman's new mega digivolution, the older tamer was stumped. Never heard or dealt with one like that but maybe one of the others has. He notes though that a human becoming a Digimon wasn't too unusual though. 
After all, I can do it. But not that way. Let me show you, Terry said with a smirk before creating a digital field around his hand. The man brings down his goggles before shouting, Execute. Spirit evolution. And Izuku sees the man transform into a strange new Digimon. One that seemed to be covered in gleaming metal and wielding a shotgun. Future Emon. He finished before nodding to Izuku, who was awestruck and excitedly asked how that was possible. The spirits of the ten legendary warriors. I hold the power of one. Originally I thought I'd become Mercuryman, but instead I took this form. Terry said with a nod to the boy. He hummed before saying, I think it may be time for you to gain one yourself. A special spirit that was supposed to go to the previous guardian candidate from this region. Futuraman disappeared and Terry checked something with his Digivus. Once he seemed to find it, he pressed a combination of buttons and pulled out a strange red figure, holding it before Izuku. This is the human spirit of fire. From what a few others who held this spirit before said, this is the spirit of Agunaman. Izuku gulped before holding out his hands to receive the spirit handed down over the years between guardians, feeling the heat and power surging from it. And even though he dismisses the thought later, Izuku could have sworn he saw the Digimon itself as it floated before him. Heh, <sighs> I remember that thing. Toshi was looking forward to actually getting the firepower the spirit had, until it wasn't enough for him. Guts said with a sad look. The two humans looked down a bit sadly before Izuku stored the spirit in his Digivus. Izuku checks in with Guts to ask what else he remembers or if he'd had any luck getting back to his other forms. No, I can't become Star or Super Starman anymore. I'm, I'm stuck with Golman. But maybe I can try to make the most of it, the old Gatsuman says with a slight smile. One Izuku returns and says, I hope you do find some new strength. Perhaps you could even come with me. A chance to see the human world again. Guts pats Izuku's arm and thanks the boy, but notes that he wasn't ready for anything like that. At least not yet. Still thinking about Gatsuman. Renemon said while invisible and walking alongside the boy. Izuku sighed and gave a simple yes and no. I just wonder if there really is no way to help him. Or if it's just a matter of giving him more time to heal. The fox Digimon nods before noting that the wish to help a former enemy is an inspiring part of who Izuku is. Perhaps that would be the thing to help that old Digimon heal, she said before slipping off to make sure the route was safe. A necessity given the frequency of villain attacks in the area. Izuku smiles and sighs slightly to himself, thinking about a different matter and a different person who was having trouble healing in a way. That being Bakugo. While Izuku was accepted into the general course, Katsuki was rejected from all of the courses of UA. Hero especially. He at first wanted to blame Izuku and his partners, but Izuku pointed out that it was impossible for that to have happened. They stick with me for the most part, and I told them not to mess with you, he had said but the explosive boy didn't believe him. And in turn no one else believed him when he tried to appeal about being attacked or influenced by strange creatures no one could see or knew were there. Especially those from UA as they pointed out that his actions during the test showed them that Bakugo didn't have the baseline empathy to be a hero noting his actions during the test and other reckless acts. Thus, Bakugo was unable to get accepted into most other hero schools as well, or at least not their hero program. He was led into the general course of Ketsubutsu Academy eventually, but the head teacher of the hero course warned him that they would be keeping a close eye on him. But Izuku couldn't focus on that right now. Instead he shook his head and looked up at the sight of Yue before him. He sighed before putting a smile on his face and focusing on next steps before him. It may not be exactly what I had in mind at first, but I know the kind of hero I am. Izuku thinks while walking towards class 1 degree Celsius, noting that there were still some interesting characters in the more relaxed class. A few who drew his eye though, were a duo of indigo-haired male students and a girl with brown hair who looked sullen. He steeled himself before going over to meet his new classmates. Hey, how's it going? He said with a little nervousness in his voice. The three looked up at him and took notice of the green-haired boy. A shaggy-haired teen gave Izuku a slight smile before addressing him. Hey there, another of the UA cast-offs. Like us, sorry, my name's Shinso Hitoshi. What's yours? Um, it's Izuku. Midoriya Izuku. Aya, I actually chose this course. Izuku said nervously. The others looked at him with some confusion before being distracted by a teacher arriving. Not a pro hero teacher, just a normal person. All right, take your seats, class. I'm Karasuma Koro. I'll be your teacher here at UA. The teacher was a man with a balloon like head topped by black, brown hair. He brought the students to attention and had each student give a brief introduction to their class. With that done he gave a brief overview of what the students would be expecting from their time as students of the UA general course. Izuku rolled his eyes slightly but also noted the others who looked at the acknowledgement of the general course. Hitoshi especially, something the teacher took note of and chose to give his students some hope. If those of you here still have a wish to be heroes, there is a possibility for you to join that class. In about three months, the UA Sports Festival will have a challenge that you students can get the chance to join the hero course. 
This brings some hope to the other students and hardens a bit of their resolves for the future. Izuku though hums before feeling Monoderman and Hackman putting their claws on his legs. He can see them and feel their own interest in the idea of fighting against the Hero Corps students. Since it was only the first day, they only went over the basics of the periods and what would be taught to them for the next three years, bearing any of the students getting a chance in the Hero Courses. After the first period, a few other teachers arrived to go over their basic classes. From present Mike acting as the English teacher, to ectoplasm being the math teacher. Yeah, we heroes will also be your teachers. For the most part, in the afternoons is when our dedicated hero course teachers will be doing more. Namely, Aizawa and Ken, plus a few others. But in the meantime, can any of you correct the syntax of this sentence? Mike explains before putting an easy question up. One Izuku answers with a sigh, though he gets a funny report from Renamon. Apparently, all of the top class students were being put through the ringer by their teacher using their quirks to perform the various fitness exam tests common to schools. Some are more comedic than others. Guess that makes sense, and it's a decent way to at least gauge what they could do. But I wonder, what is he really after? Izuku thinks while checking some details in his goggles, especially when he see the point Aizawa made about expelling the person who came in last. He leans back before thinking the matter over, and it was compounded by hearing the man expel one student, despite the short team putting out his best during the whole set of tests. Since classes were let out for the most part, Izuku slipped away and used his digital portal to get into UAS network. Izuku, what's up? Hackman asked before following along the digital waves. Just something I need to check on. I'm not entirely sure about Aizawa, but there is something off with his whole delivery. Once he was in the area above the teacher's office, he tapped into the cameras. All right, here is the whole story. It is true that I do now have it on record of you being expelled. Aizawa starts with the short teen, who was crying and wiping his eyes at the thought of being removed on his first day but it stops with what Aizawa says next. But I'm also re-enrolling you. It may be a bit extreme, but I wanted this as a way to make you grow beyond what most limit themselves to. Think of it as a way to experience death, without actually dying. The teen collapses and lets out some thank yous to Aizawa while Izuku watches on. I guess that makes some sense. This feels a bit like he was trying to help the students in a way that can't be conveyed normally. Like what Terry does, Izuku says with a chuckle. Monoderman nods before saying, true. And it's not like you haven't felt deaths before. You know it better than most of these kids ever could. So why don't you want to join the hero ranks? Izuku looks down at the bipedal dragon and sighs, noting that he didn't want to lose his connection to all of his friends again. I half forgot about Hackman because I couldn't go back to the digital world. And don't forget about what happened to poor Guts. His partner abandoned this life. And look where that led. Izuku says with a sad look down. Hackman sees Izuku's point, but does still wish he could stick it to most of the others in the hero class. Since you already are more of a hero than most of them are or could be. At least a Digimon. Izuku smiles and then hugs his oldest friend, thanking him and saying that was more than enough. They then leave at that as some new members of Wanna show up. Those being Yui and Jiro. Hey Aizawa-sensei, do you know if a green-haired teenage boy was supposed to be in our class? Or maybe the other class? Yui asked with a little confusion etched on her face. Aizawa raised an eyebrow but checked class 1B just in case. He shook his head before saying, no. No green-haired male students anyway. There is a recommended student with green hair and 1B but they are female. The two shake their heads and confirm that it was a boy they were looking for. And Aizawa again confirms that there were no there were no boys with green hair in the hero classes. The two shared a look before thanking their teacher and taking their leave. I don't get it. I was sure they'd accept him, given the rescue point aspect. Jairo says while rubbing the back of her head. Yui nods and says, I agree. He saved all of us and did that whole transformation into that hero form or whatever. But we didn't get his name or the name of those others with him. The two hum and head back to their classroom to talk with some of their other classmates. Though they were surprised to see Minta Minoru back again. I thought you were expelled. The blonde electric user Kaminari Denki said with a scratch of his head. The short pervert sighed before telling a bit of what happened after the tests. Turns out, he wanted to. To grow I guess. All of us are supposed to be heroes after all. And if I don't put my all in, me or anyone else could die. The short teen said with a sad and then slightly determined face. A few of the others hum at that while the stiffest member of the class Tenya Ida chops his hands rapidly before praising Minda's newfound resolve. Jairo nodded and at least respected this new perspective. She now found it stranger that that boy who saved her and a few others wasn't part of the hero class. Yui was right with her and resolved to find out more about who it was that saved her. They have to be around close by. Maybe he was. Wait what? Yui thought aloud until she did a double take. She was walking toward the library and she thought she saw the same fluffy hair that saved her during the entrance exam. So, she ran to find who it was, only to be greeted by an empty stairwell. Yui looks up and down the steps to see or hear if there was someone moving up and down. Am I going crazy? She asked herself before the pink skin and hair to Shidomina called out to her, saying they should head home soon. But she was not crazy, as Izuku had slipped into the digital world that was within or connected to UA. Looking around with some fascination at the mass of books in what seemed to be a variety of labs or similar sections that were a part of the digital space. Well didn't expect this, but it is cool. Thank you for that young man. 
I'm amazed a human could find their way here, a strange little white Digimon with a pink hair mac, he said. He was also wearing a lab coat and had a few other Digimon around him. Where are my manners? I am Professor Bakaman. I've been studying the digital space here and the various strange mutations that are gathered in this place. Izuku clears his throat before nodding and saying that he was something of the guardian of the area. At least, that's what I'm learning to be. Bakaman hums before questioning why a human would involve himself with mostly Digimon matters. The green tea kneels a bit before patting Hackman on the back and smiling. I had come to this world a long time ago, gained a great friend and Hackman here. But when I left I forgot him in my adventures. Now I don't want to forget and more importantly, the digital and human worlds are more connected than most think about. Bakaman closes his eyes, smiles, and nods with what Izuku is describing. That was all I wanted to know young man. If you ever need a place to rest or relax, you can come anytime. Bakaman says with an extended hand. One Izuku shakes. Over the next week, Izuku spends time not just on his classes but also exploring Bakaman's research station within the school while also getting to know more about some of his classmates. Shinso the most as his aspirations reminded Izuku of his old ones to be a hero. A hero can and is defined more than by their quirk. Despite what people say Hitoshi, you do have an important piece for what it means to be a hero. Compassion, Izuku said one day. The brainwashing boy blushed a bit but thanked his friend. Meanwhile, there were a few things off in different parts of the school, namely in battlegrounds where the first-year hero students were trying to do their first exercise with All Might teaching. What's wrong young Kodai? All Might asked as the cameras were acting up for some reason. I don't know sir. Ah, uh, Huey said before her earpiece shorted out. She had been defending a fake weapon with one of the recommended students for 1A, Yeirazu Momo. She had built some small auto turret weapons to help defend their objective. But they started acting sporadically and shooting randomly. But that wasn't the only thing acting up. After taking a hit from one of the cannon shots, Sato Rikido used his quirk to push through the attacks. Only to suddenly be rampaging longer than his quirk should have let him. The boy having punched Momo through a wall and broken a few of her bones. Even his partner, Yurek Ochako had tried to stop him by removing his gravity, only for her to struck by something she nor anyone else could see. And the rampaging Sato could still move around somehow. I gotta stop or slow him down. Yui says before using her quirk to some barrels expand so she could try and trap the bulked up boy. But it didn't work, as he seemed to know when her attacks were coming and would lash out or dodge at the perfect time. How? This doesn't make any sense. She said this just before being knocked around again. The only thing she could tell was different was that his eyes seemed off. Looking bloodshot and empty, Sato picked up a massive piece of debris and was about to drop the concrete on her. But Yui wasn't about to give up and she recognized the debris. Don't think so. Quick shrink. She shouts and large piece of rubble turns into a small rock. She then reverses her quirk and makes it grow atop Sato's head. Or it mostly hits Sato's head. From her perspective, the rock seemed to stop a bit above his head. But it dazes the buff boy long enough for Yui to move away and save the others. First grabbing Momo and then heading to pull Achako out but she was struck in the back by two new attacks, one being from Stone Sato through in the same strange unseen force from before, with Yui screaming in pain as she feels it stabbing her in the back. She collapsed next to the other two and saw Sato looming over them with another rock, one that she couldn't shrink. Yui closed her eyes expecting the end to come, only to be shocked when a strange white portal opens underneath them, and they all fall through, well except Sato. While he was being sucked in, that same strange force seems to be holding him back. That is when Yui sees that same fluffy hair that saved her before appear and kicks Otto in the back with a few other strange creatures accompanying him. When she lands the scenery around her makes her jaw drop. The group had been dropped into a field with a few trees around. In the sky, there were strange creatures and what looked like electric signals running through every at all. But her musings were cut short when a crash resounds through the area. At what appears first is Sato, but he had something attached to him. A large purple, pink insect was lodged into his back and head. One that had some blood on a leg, likely hers. And then Izuku drops in with his main two partners. Hackman to his right and Monoderman to his left. And then the others appear. Renamon landing near Yui with Ludaman on her arm. And Liaman lands with his sword drawn. Who flies down next is Sukeman and she lands atop Izuku's head. And then she snuggles into his fluffy hair. Okay that is kind of cute but maybe not the best time, she says with some bemusement. Izuku looks up and sighs before asking Tsukeman to help keep the others safe. Okay, I think me and Renamon can heal the girls, the little guinea pig-like Digimon says before digivolving to Witchman. Making Yui's jaw drop, Renamon nods and assures Izuku they'll cover and heal the girls. Do what you need to do Izuku. Ludaman then appears and digivolves to Tia Ludaman and stands with Liaman. Izuku smiles and says, we'll save this guy and stop Parasimon. He shifts his goggles to the top of his head and gains his two main champion partners in Bea Huckman and Strikterman standing beside him. Before he says to charge, Izuku stops and contemplates something. No better time to try it out, he thinks aloud before tapping his goggles. Suddenly his right hand is surrounded in fire and he sweeps it in a wide arc around him. Execute. Spirit evolution. Izuku shouts as the digital code and flames wrap around him. Within the spiral of data, he sees the spirit of flame and it nods to him. 
Izuku returns it and holds his arms out to the side and felt the Digimon surround him and become a part of his being once again. But this time it wasn't him and just him. This time it was mostly all him and the power of flame he now commanded. Pa, Hagunimon. Izuku shouted as he threw out a pair of punches. And the warrior of flame had arrived. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku becomes heroic god. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Han Baron for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfic for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.